What are the core tenets that uh, RoboCop has to uphold, Alex? Uh, the law is good. That's right. That's one. Um, we caught a meal. Good. The innocent. Catch a meal. That's one of them. And catch a meal. Yes. <laughs> uphold the pro- public trust. Protect the innocent. Arrest a meal. From Austin, Texas, where we're betting all our money on Last Action Hero being the big hit blockbuster of the summer. It's Retro Pals with Danny and Alex. Hello, Alex. Hi, Danny. I just came back from the previews, and this movie looks amazing. It's got it all. Action, comedy, drama, mm-hmm. golden tickets, and we know how much golden tickets do well in the box. It's got Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's got it's got the main kid is named Danny, so yeah. it's got to be good. It's going to be amazing. This is required well, viewing. You have to watch Last Action Hero before you can see another Retro Pal stream. I'm sorry. Shut off the stream right now if you haven't seen it. We've been bought out by the Last Action Hero lobby, <laughs> and we're here for it. It feels great. It feels great. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. We're trying something new tonight. Uh, this is great. I'm on point once again. Alex is the uh, the hype man. I'm hype. He's hype. He's going to be commenting on everything he sees today, but I'm in the control center, so if anything fucks up, if you see anything weird or strange or off kilter that's my fault sorry about that so uh alex why don't you thank some folks while i get things set up here all right uh thank you crungling 48 month resub thank you so much thank you thank you polo cat fan 22 month resub ballin exactly thank you cambrian era 46 month resub double donk yes we were playing uh who was who was playing donk earlier it was a uh, it was me. It was you. No, who else was playing it? So it was like. Oh, it was. Do, we managed to uh, stream the 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 donk the samurai duck theme exactly the same time as Duke Donuts was. So it's truly a blessed day. Thank you, Skullcaster, nine month resub, and thank you, Devil Ray, sixty three months. Holy shit! Thank you. That's so many months. Are thank you, you okay? I don't know. Are we? <laughs> we shall see. Thank you so very much to Apricot Ghost for the thirty nine month resub. How many popcorns are we looking at, folks? Five bags of popcorn for these tables. Yep, tonight's stream is going to be a real uh, five-bagger evening, so get all your popcorn ready. And thank you so much to Seraphis King, 32-month resub, and Celltape9091, and Seth Besai 19 Thank you so much for the 100 bits each. Appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank Welcome. You. Welcome to the show. Oh, man. I have so many moving parts to deal with here. I don't even know what to do. So, pinball. This is something I've been meaning to bring to the stream for a while. We've been uh, we've played some video pinball games in the past. That is uh, console and arcade games that are pinball like, but otherwise use no mechanical parts. These are the real things, the real machines that were in arcades in the 80s and 90s, simulated using modern technology. That being Visual Pinball X. Uh, the people, we took it to our Patreon. We asked them uh, which era of this particular developer do you want to see. They answered like this. For those not aware, uh, this is all the same developer, these eras. They started off as Data East, then became Sega after uh, Data East pinball collapsed for reasons uh, that'll become obvious. Later on, after Sega, they became Stern, and uh, as far as I know, a lot of those designers are still there today making tables. So this, uh, tonight's stream represents a good 30 years of pinball, but uh, we're going to look at a, a very interesting segment of that pinball. What do you think about pinball, pinball segments? Um, I love them. I love when pinballs aren't segment, but I also love thinking, folks, thank you, Krungo Kong, for the 39-month resub. You burned off all your chest here. Folks, if you didn't catch your Monday <laughs> stream, please, that Monday please stream. watch it. That cursed-ass Monday stream. You don't, you don't like Flash games, Danny? Still still can't get uh, chest hairless David Spade out of my mind many not days later. Not not a Dickie. He, I, I bet the last action hero is probably better than Dickie Roberts, former child star. Yeah, yeah, Just, probably. And thank you, SneakerNet, so very much for the 100 bits. All right. First off, I want to get something straight here. Okay. This entire stream 
is the fault of streamer Flannel Cat, who I'm shouting out right now. Flannel Cat. I'd really appreciate it if you took the time to uh, to follow her. That would make me feel better about completely ripping her off for tonight's stream. <laughs> the last week she just finished doing a Data East pinball roundup, and oh my god, by coincidence, I'm doing the exact same thing. Uh, if you like pinball, go check out Cat. She plays a whole bunch of strange tables simulated in Visual Pinball X, learned so much just from watching her streams. And in fact, she got me into Pinball FX3. I didn't even have a single Pinball FX3 table as of two months ago. And I looked on Steam today and it said, Pinball FX3, 120 hours played. <laughs> so that's how big I've gotten into pinball over just the last couple months. I've been wanting this stream to happen and it's all thanks to her. So thank you, Cat. Yeah, thank you, Final Cat. And I figure since we haven't really covered mechanical pinball machines on the stream before, why don't we start off with a little history? Sorry, I turned into a YouTuber there for a second. <laughs> Display capture on. Video games on. All right, a little history. 4.6 billion years ago, uh, some shit happened in space and the Earth was created. Cool. Many uh, years later, man invented pinball. At first, pinball looked a whole lot like this. Oh my god, they have ancient pinball. They have ancient pinball Bally in Visual Pinball X. This is a 1934 table. This predates uh, electricity coming into these machines. It was just <laughs> it was just in 1934 they figured out how to charge people for these things. So if you look in the lower left, it has uh, seven balls for one penny. Well, that's not bad. That's a pretty good deal. I'm going to turn this down. Sorry if any of these games end up blowing your ears out. I'm going to try my best not to let that happen. Let's play this. Seven balls. Seven balls. It's kind of reminding me more of Pachinko. Yeah, that's the thing. When Pinball started out, it was a uh, relative game of Pachinko, or the uh, classic game of Lucky Hit. Would you like to play a game of Lucky Hit? How about some Lucky Hit? <laughs> and I get why it's called Pinball. Because mm -hmm. in the beginning, pins. it was literally just pins and balls. It uh, predated flippers. These early machines are called flipperless machines, if you look in Visual Pinball X. Oh, I got the bally hole! Holy shit! You got the bally hole? Yeah! That doubles your score. So, even in this simulation, Visual Pinball X had to add a couple of things just to make it uh, playable for modern sensibilities. That score counter in the upper left is entirely fictitious, uh, as is that light bulb in the upper right telling you the, uh, the game is on. <laughs> so way back when, you would go into a drugstore, Pop a penny into one of these, and you'd be like, holy shit, entertainment will never get better than this. This is this is unbelievable. Mankind has peaked. Would you play this in a drugstore, or would you play this in one of those nefarious pinball uh, arcades? Well, it started out as drugstores, but eventually people figured out you could gamble with these things. Uh, that's why all the modern pinball machines you see say, for amusement only, because uh, you're not supposed to gamble with them. And uh, that's Ballyhoo. That's, where, that's what a penny got you in 1934. <laughs> So you want to go sicko mode? Yes. Let's pretend like we're just a complete sicko with a pocket full of pennies and we're just going to completely just fuck up this Rich. machine with pinballs. Yeah, yeah. Give me more. Give me more. More balls. Come on. Keep them coming. Keep them coming, man. Come on. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's like to be rich in the 1930s. Oh, man. I lost my penny in 10 seconds of pure bliss. Amazing. Thank you, Blab, for the 30-month resub, and thank you, Sneakernets, 100 bits. Yeah, I was gambling over Terminator 2 table all this time. Yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. It's against the law. Now, many years later, uh, things were invented, various uh, things that enhanced the pinball experience. This machine's going to look a little weird, but don't worry about it. We're going to move on from this pretty soon. This has not gotten a VPX simulation. This is an old-ass table from 1969. Spin a card. Check this out. Okay. I love these uh, mechanical sounds. Oh yeah, this is what you call an electromechanical machine. Uh, they invented electricity and they used it to power pinball machines. What does that mean? It allows it to have uh, lights, working bumpers, flippers, slingshots, the whole deal. You don't just tilt the machine to play, you can actually influence the, uh, the outcome. You ever seen an old machine like this? Yes, yes, actually. Um... I saw it at, I think, California Extreme, and I kind of love these old machines. Yeah, they got a charm to them. Mm -hmm. I like them. It's not much to them, but I kind of like that. Yeah, very simple rule sets is the thing. 
Uh, they were just getting over the fact that they added electricity to these things, and it took many decades for pinball to progress past this point. But eventually what happened is pinball machines got CPUs. They got ROM chips. That is, essentially, they turned them into arcade machines. Had the same kind of boards, the same kind of FM synth that was popular at the time. So basically, these uh, machines became video games that were also pinball machines, and that allowed them to become incredibly complex and incredibly flashy and incredibly obnoxious mm -hmm. if you were a, a certain developer at the time. I'm not going to name any names. But I thought I'd give you just to, just to set your expectations here. This is what pinball used to be before Data East got to it. A nice, a nice wholesome family game, only used by the mob uh, for a brief period of time. Yeah, pinball was illegal in many places for a while. Yeah, they outlawed pinball. It was recently made legal in New York City <laughs> just in the last couple decades. There's famous pictures of people like smashing up pinball machines and it would be like, aha, we broke up this gambling den. And it would just be like, uh, just a bunch of machines with pins in them called like Bally... Ballyhoo, I guess. <laughs> Just, I, I wish that modern uh, pinball machines were still used for gambling so you could see them, like, smashing up the Adams Family. Oh, that would be a crime. I know! Don't do that. Don't break up the Adams Family. <laughs> Alright, so there's your there's your pinball primer. You know what to expect from pinball now. You got some pins, some balls, flippers, slingshots, in lanes, out lanes, bumpers. Wait. All that stuff. Slingshots? Yeah, yeah, those are those little, um, the bumpers on the sides of the flippers. Oh! Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Speaking of, since I'm also ripping off uh, someone else here, why don't you follow Flannel Cat's wife, Arborelia, who's doing a chronological look at every single pinball machine simulated in VPX. Starting from 1934, she's now up to the 1970s. I've really been enjoying those streams, so check those out, too. Let's get to Data East already. Enough of this history bullshit. Data East. Data, Data East, East entered the pinball market in 1987 with Laser War. Now you're going to see some shit. Now you're going to see some shit. What? Did it just talk to me? Did it just yep. tell me Laser War? So, you can see the advantages of uh, CPUs and ROMs. Uh, they allow you to put words on the table in the uh, the LCD readouts. Hey. So many flashing lights. And hey. uh, they talk now, too. No, you're missing the big thing. They added photorealistic babes. Oh, yeah, there's that, too. <laughs> like, I don't think you mentioned it, but there's a lot of pinball games, with, and this has been throughout pinball history. There have been a lot of babes in pinball game history. Babes are a big part of pinball. They kind of are. Shout out to babes. It's not talked about enough. Let me see if I can get a good audio reading on this. Okay, I think this should be good. Let's play some damn laser war. Oh, also, VPX... Uh, completely replicates the fact that these machines are totally flashy and oh, uh, very loud in addition to that. So uh, if you're wearing headphones or you don't like flashing lights, beware this stream. Thank you, Rachel Retro. 58-month resub. Shout out to babes indeed. I like how the uh, the back glass art actually had a dude who was screaming in the middle, but he's being uh, his place is being taken by the, the pinball machine in this case. I like that. I don't want to see him. Yeah. He's We're here for the babes. Last ball. Good luck. Last ball. So now the machines can shit talk you. They can keep track of your progress. But the, I think the thing that really shocks me about a lot of these uh, pinball machines is that they have plots. Right? Yeah. Like. Mm-hmm. They have backstories. They have lore. That was shit. I'm going to play another credit. <laughs> Belly who didn't have lore. <laughs> Like, am I gonna be one of those like return guys who's like we need to go back to like nailing nails and pins into boards for pinball? Because like Bally who didn't have any plot. Mm hmm Now look at where we are. We're in 1987, the glorious 80s. So what is the plot of Laser War? Um, I think there's a laser war. Okay, fair enough. Ooh, I'm... Annie, what uh, version of uh, Visual Pinball are you using? Uh, I am using the most recent version. You want to look for Visual Pinball X, okay. which really, really is a big step above previous Visual Pinball versions. I've been, I messed with this in the past, like over a decade ago. I had so many problems with this. You need to be a genius just to install and use this program, but they've made it better and somewhat easier to use just recently. I mean, look at this. This looks great. This does look great. Yeah, I... I remember um, Visual Pinball being kind of uh, a super brain type operation. Mm -hmm. 
I think my favorite uh, visual pinball memory is trying to emulate Attack from Mars. Way back when, uh, they had uh, to use creative solutions to simulate some aspects of the experience. So Attack from Mars had these little alien figures on the machine that would pop up and down during certain modes. What they did in Visual Pinball is they made that a font so that the font would load and uh, the aliens would jiggle that way. Except I didn't get the font to load and I couldn't make it work. So instead of little aliens bouncing on the machine, it was just a bunch of little aerial letter A's that were colored green. <laughs> and then when you uh, entered that mode, those little uh, capital A's would just start hopping around. <laughs> Pretty good. But yeah, suffice to say, people have been working on these machines for decades at this point, trying to recreate them. And uh, here in 2022, they look pretty damn good. They really do. Also, I would totally... This looks like this looks like a movie you would see on MST3K. I really love this uh, game's aesthetics so, so much. That was also Data East thing at the time. Like, eventually they got into licenses, like pinball machines based on actual TV shows and movies. But back when they started up, they didn't have the budget, so they just have to be like... Uh, we saw this movie on TV and we made a, a pinball machine that looks kind of like it. <laughs> You'll see that in just a little bit with the next couple of machines. So is this development team American or...? This is American. This has nothing to do with Data East Japan. They just let a bunch of Americans do whatever they wanted with pinball. And that's how you ended up with the tables you're going to see tonight. So that was uh, 1987. Let's move on to 1988 with their second release, Secret Service. So I just mentioned uh, some of these machines are, are based on other properties, even though they're not technically licensed. Let's see if you can guess what this one is. Secret service in digital stereo. Agent 001. Retter scan completed. Begin play. They say Agent 001. Yep. Okay. But it's Americans. Wait. I just heard the Mission Impossible theme. Yeah, um, so it wants to be James Bond and Mission Impossible to the point where it actually uses the Mission Impossible theme. <laughs> I don't think they got the rights to that. I think they just uh, assumed it was public domain. What? Isn't it weird to use a TV show theme song outside, you know, that TV show? It is! It is weird! It's very much... A, that's, a, that's a real bootlegger move, Data East. What are mm -hmm. you doing? Humble beginnings. I think around this time they released a Secret Agent in arcades. That was a Japanese uh, Data East right. game. When you get a sec chat, I want you to turn it up. Okay, let's do that. Let's crank this. I lost the ball so you could hear the music. <laughs> it's just literally the Mission Impossible theme, not like a weird cover, not like some off-brand knockoff. It's just that. Excuse me. Okay, fine. You'll see certain themes start to develop with uh, pinball machines in the 80s and 90s. I... I don't want to get ahead of you, but I think I know what that theme is. <laughs> Fun games. You liking this, uh, this theme song? I really love the FM synth renditions of some of the music you hear in some of these games. I guess sneaker notes 100 bits. I want full copy of the printer in my pinball. Thank you all for putting 100 bits as well. Thank you. They go legit pretty soon, trust me. I also recommend checking out the uh, the back glass for this machine sometime. Agent one. I think that's, an, that's a babe out there, isn't that? That's a babe. Okay, so we're so, two for two for babe. Yeah. Big babe focus here. This music is sick. What is this? Is this a lost Sonic the Hedgehog song? <laughs> this is... Wow. Game, the Game Over music is good. It is. It's a banger. Baby. Oh. Baby, you're the best. <laughs> I'd never heard that before. What a cool machine this is. Oh my god. Okay, that's apparently a Carly Simon song. <laughs> cool. I bet they didn't get the license for that either. It's the love theme. Oh god, that's beautiful. So uh, I mentioned the last game had a pretty good back glass. This game also has a good back glass, but it's not shown on the screen at any time, so I thought I'd show you now. Alright, let's uh, see. This is the back glass for Torpedo Alley. <laughs> 
That's one, two, three babes. Yep. And uh, they're all... I guess those are the baby uniforms when you work in Torpedo Alley. Yeah, if you weren't around in the 80s, uh, this is what the Navy was like, as uh. featured in the, the hit song, In the Navy. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Data East used a lot of sex appeal to sell their first few machines, suffice to say. Let's go ahead and play it. Can it possibly live up to the back class? I hope so. Bad switch, none. Bad coil, none. none. Looking good. Okay, so uh, submarine themed, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Va vaguely nautical. Request permission to come aboard. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Welcome, Commander. Why'd you say it's sexy like that? Don't worry about it. We're here to do torpedoes. I don't. I can't use the distractions right now. Chad kept mentioning a cat in the uh, torpedo alley. I don't. I, I didn't see them. Oh man, but... I missed the cat, but I, I take your word for it. Yeah, I believe you. So not so bad. Only releasing a few machines, but I'd say between the sex appeal and the uh, the good music. And the, the nice table designs, they probably made a good impression way back when. Oh, the Cats in the O of Torpedo? Oh, right, yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a Surly Sailor Cat. Oh, that's so good. Here's the problem with streaming pinball. I, I'm not going to be any good at any of the games we're going to play tonight. Some of them I like a lot, and I've even gotten good scores on, but nothing doing when you're streaming. Look at that, it's got a little light-up submarine in the middle. That's so cool. It's sometimes it's a boat. Let's see if we can sink it. Stand by to take toot toot. Eat shit. Are those little icebergs? I think so. Well, that's. Oh, how adorable! You can hit an iceberg and die. Mm -hmm. It's just like the real life. Just like the real life. Crash dive. Crash time. Crash, is that what he said? I, I, that's what I heard, but I could have heard wrong. <laughs> Crash time. Yellow target ready. We can range. Oh man, these these tables. I'm looking at them and I'm just like, this is so quaint. Y'all have no idea what's ahead. If you don't know what other tables Data East released after this, just enjoy the the subtle refinement of these early tables while the you can. Subtle refinement. Two, one, ready. Torpedo two tube ready. Torpedo two two. No, oh, we didn't match. Third point to continue mission. This has a buy-in feature. Wow, is this like the first machine that did that? Third point to continue mission. Yes, sir. Sorry, I was playing some some nautical pop over there. Uga, uga. The... She went a wooga. She just went a wooga. That wasn't an a wooga sound effect. That was a lady going a wooga. All right, cool. We've arrived at the end of 1988. It's been a big year for Data East, and they're going to close out the year with Time Machine. All right, babes, 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 babes. Oh, you think there's going to be babes in this? I see them. I see them. Oh, my God, I love this. I love Time Machine. So, so let me mention this. This machine has a, a full title, including a subtitle. It's called Time Machine, Where You Go Back in Time. <laughs> Time machine where you go back in time? Oh, it's that time machine. The one where you go back in time, obviously. Danny, time machine. Where you go back in time, you know. Was this? Oh, like a time machine. I get it. Star Wara? Star Wara. Star Warp. Star Warp. Star Warp, okay. So. This one might be too loud. Their time machine is a car. Yeah, where you go back in time. Okay. I heard that was the original name of Back to the Future. Back to the Future, where you go back in time. <laughs> back to the Future, where you go back to the future. The movie where you go back to the future. <laughs> they didn't want to head they didn't want to have any chance of someone not getting the theme. Like time machine? I don't I don't know what that is. What? That guy's wearing a laser sh laser shoot suit. When well, anyways, it's... He's, he's wearing some 70s shit. When did this come out? This was 1988. He went back in time, you see. 
Oh, oh, okay. I know okay. it's hard to grasp the, the concept the of the time machine. machine. <laughs> Go back in time, yes. Maybe that's why they have that subtitle on there. But listen to this. They're starting to get more fitting music. Like, not just rip-offs of existing songs, but, you know, something that's appropriate for the theme. Something that gets you in the mood for pinballing. This table's tough. I can't do anything with this table. I'm more of a Last Action Hero fan. Yeah, the, I guess the flippers are a bit loud, but what are you gonna do? <laughs> I mean, pinball's loud. Yeah, that's the other thing about visual pinball. There's no standards for, like, sound balancing. <laughs> so some tables just have super loud flippers. Some have flippers you can't hear at all. Nice, I hit the ramp. They, they singing? Yeah. And they were playing some Pac-Man sound effects, which I'm, I'm sure they licensed. And why not? This machine's cool. I just like the uh, the amount of colors in the, the play field. It's a very colorful machine. <laughs> Star War. I love that movie. Go we'll see a Star War. See, this is where you start to see Data East get their uh, get their real chops. You got vocal theme songs. You got mm -hmm. tables that sing to you in addition to talking. You have big ramps, light shows, and we're going to the '60s. I I guess he's going Shit. back in time for the babes. God, I had the thing lit. Is that what he's doing? He's going back in time for the babes? I'm assuming. I mean, he's going up babes in this vehicle, right? That's right? true. <laughs> I didn't think about that. We have to return to the past to harvest their bounty of babes. I guess that paints a pretty grim future here. I never really thought about it. apocalyptic future, we must hunt down babes from the past. I just thought it was about a time machine where you go back in time. I mean, it is, technically. He is in the time machine going back in time. But it's to escape the grim, grim future of 2002 or whatever. Where babes are outlawed, and the only outlaws have babes. <laughs> <laughs> this is a nice and proper noisy cabinet. If it doesn't annoy the proprietor, it's not a real pinball machine. I don't like the snappy sound of these flippers, but this would be a bit much after a while. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. People in chat saying this would absolutely annoy the family restaurateur who uh, <laughs> has this in their uh, waiting area. There was a place in uh, Austin called Pizza Slice that had a Last Action Hero table, and oh my god. If you put a quarter in that thing, everybody across the block would be able to hear it. Wasn't Pizza Slice not their name, but just what it said? Like yeah, on their, on they their didn't way. have an actual name on the restaurant. They just had uh, one of those placard signs out there, that, and it, all it said the entire time the place was open was pizza slice. Yes. It didn't have a, a price. It didn't have a, a list of toppings. It, it just, just said, said pizza slice. It just said pizza slice. That that is the Austin I miss. You can't get away with that anymore. You can't just have a sign that says pizza slice. Yeah, they don't let you do pizza slice anymore. Yeah, they have to of, say, uh, like artisanal pizza slice, one billion bitcoins. <laughs> Bitcoins. Danny, you haven't seen all the Bitcoin. Oh my gosh, I wonder if all the FTX billboards are still up in downtown Austin. Okay, let's see if we can hit the ramp this time. Right. Oh, that was slick, Danny. That was a nice death save. Totally intentional, too. Come on. Oh, no. missed it. Just my luck. I'm still stuck in the damn 2020s. The babeless future. <laughs> I've gotten a couple extra balls on this run. This may be my best time machine play ever. It would be nice if I cared about time machine. I guess it's okay. I mean, you're you're not compelled by the plot, by the mechanics. I think you could use some on-screen text that you have to read before you can start the game. Okay, maybe that's like good. maybe they should give you a quiz on it just to make sure you got it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think you could use NPCs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pinball NPCs. Mm -hmm. Pinball side quests. I think 
give the Ultimo 100 bits for a deconstructed pizza slice token. This machine does go back in time. Don't worry. It's where you go back in time, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to end this game. We've seen enough of time machine where you go back in time. Can so I far, see? this is my favorite, though. Oh, can we show that title again? Time machine? Oh, uh, if you want to know what the title of this machine is, let me see if I matched. This is important. Ah, shit. It was nine. nine. The machine is called Time Machine, where you go back in time. <laughs> just to clear things up. Uh -huh, I just wanted you to know. It's, it's one of those time machines. Don't go expecting the other kind of time machine, where you don't go back in time. Alright, let's go ahead and turn down the desktop audio way down for our next game, because I have no idea if this is super loud, and it'll be embarrassing if it is. This is the rare machine that uh, didn't have a Visual Pinball X upgrade. It still uses original Visual Pinball. Every single other machine you'll see tonight uh, uses Visual Pinball X, and it's been upgraded by modders, but not this one. This is the one that's been left behind. This is uh, Playboy 35th Anniversary. Danny. So it's going to look a little weird. Now, I don't get why Did no one's... Did you all hear that? I don't get why no one's upgraded this one, because I literally played this back then as a tiny baby. One of the first pinball machines I played was... Freaking Playboy from Data East. So our babe counter has gone from one to a billion. Like, this is the ultimate babe pinball machine. Yeah, listen to the flippers on this. And everything else is just like kaboom. <laughs> this so is what, did uh, Data East make anything that wasn't horny? Hang on, we'll get to that point. Okay, okay. We'll get I there. Just... God, look at these original visual pinball physics. <laughs> what was that sound effect? Uh, it was a, a bird that's also a babe, I presume. Ooh, ooh. Danny? <laughs> Danny? What? what? This is, is normal this pinball. Is why you took points so I wouldn't like, turn off the screen? Because of the Playboy? I will never hit the Rolo button. That's my promise to you. Was that a blue-footed booby? Oh, I get it. You're making a booby joke. You got me. Freaking chat's owning me. Hugh Hefner is smiling at me up there from beyond the grave. He's like, ah, get owned, retro pals. Why does it do this? Honey, honey, I don't know how to tell you this, but it's a Playboy pinball. The game. original machine didn't do that. Really? No, it didn't. I would have remembered that. Or maybe, maybe they just turned it off for, uh, Could for, be. They, maybe they hit the non-horny switch. Yeah, yeah, maybe there was a non-horny dip switch for San Antonio malls. Well, I mean, probably the proprietor was sick of hearing moaning every time some poor kid hit the pinball, because you know, some 13 or 12 year old was going in there and just slamming the mm -hmm. ooh button, you know? I felt so grown up playing this. <laughs> Did you feel, like, really mature? Yeah. I was like, I'm sophisticated. I'm playing the, the Playboy machine. I'm like six or seven or something. <laughs> That's beautiful. That is, I mean, it looks sophisticated. See that? There's a little champagne popper there you can hit the ball into. Extra ball. Extra ball. That's sexy, I guess. Extra balls are pretty sexy. Ladies love it when you have an extra ball. Champagne. champagne. Oof, didn't even go that far up the ramp. Visual Pinball modders, get on it. This is the only Data East machine that has not had a, a Visual Pinball X upgrade. You could be the hero we need. Bring the oohs and ahs to Visual Pinball X. It's what gamers crave. So is this just in an arcade, or was it in, like, a restaurant, or...? It was a tilt arcade okay. in, uh, in San Antonio. Okay, I think I know that arcade. Yeah. All right, Alex. You ready for this? No. <laughs> I don't know if Twitch is gonna allow us to stream more of this yeah, machine. Danny. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and drain the ball here. <laughs> You're getting the wrong impression of Data East, I think. Am I? Am I? I think we need to move on beyond these uh, early horny tables. I think they peaked. With, uh, with Playboy in terms of horniness. So don't get excited, y'all. 
because the next machine, oh my god. How about this, Alex? The next machine is the least horny machine possible. It's a machine okay. based on Monday Night Football. Okay. Yeah, see? Okay. Man, I can't believe they had a buy-in feature back in fucking, what is this, 1989? I remember Bally adding this with Twilight Zone, and it was like a huge deal. Data Easter Innovators. That's the end of 1988. We've arrived in 1989. The future is nigh, and we need to play some Monday Night Football. I I'm ready for some football. Are you? So how... Hey, okay! Welcome to Monday Night Football. He pronounces it Monday. <laughs> And, uh, hey, I was expecting cheerleaders. Is, you you did it. You did it, Danny. Mm -hmm. It's not horny. I told you. Okay. Hi, from Chicago. Welcome to Monday Night Football. A 40-yard return. He sounds like he couldn't believe it. A 40-yard return? That's bullshit. He's over the goal line. The kick is up. It's good. So I kind of don't like how light isn't really, uh... <laughs> standardized in visual pinball tables, so sometimes you get really dark-looking tables. On the other hand, I really like how this table looks with the it dark effect. It looks so sick, Danny. Yeah, this looks amazing. Are there cheerleaders near the bottom? Oh, I see them! Okay, so it does have babes. Okay, good. What are they spelling? B-O-S-C- Go caca. <laughs> Nailed it. I'm wow. pretty sure that's exactly what that's they said. That's exactly what they're saying. That's, ex that's exactly what they were saying. Okay, they're saying B O M B. Well, no, no, they're saying caca. I'm sorry. So you see a little bit of uh, creativity here. You got this uh, where you shoot the ball up the ramp. There's many different places where it can land. It has uh, various oh, ramp oriented gameplay mechanics. It has a big center ramp that feels really good to hit. But one thing I'm noticing with uh, with Data East is uh, something that Alex is probably familiar with. Now, Alex, what can you tell me about Italian bottoms? Oh, what a hit! Um. You. I know you're familiar. You're always talking about him. Well. Uh, they're always like, Mamma Mia, that's a spicy, uh, that's a spicy meatball. <laughs> <laughs> that's an acceptable joke, thank you. <laughs> so, Italian bottoms, in terms of pinball, means this particular layout with the flippers and slingshots here. You got two out lanes, two in lanes, two slingshots above the flippers, and of course two flippers. It's called that because that design appeals to European players in particular. Why? Way back when, uh, I think it was some designer at Bally? He was designing some table with a non-standard layout, and feedback came back from their uh, their European branch. They were all like, uh, our Italian players really prefer it if you have this, this standardized layout. Because the idea is that, because of the end lanes and the way it's designed, you can easily trap the ball. Mm. That is, being able to hold it in place before shooting. Like, uh, let me show you. Like the, yeah, like that. <laughs> exactly like that. Imagine that I actually held the ball in place instead of uh, failing. Now, supposedly that was uh, that was just what they preferred in European bars because you could take a drink, you could uh, chat with other people, you could line up your shots. I, I guess so. Italian players would like turn to the other patrons and be like, "Hey, what are you freaking doing with this?" You missed uh, Danny doing a lot of hand gestures. <laughs> but. That's literally what happened. And as far as I know, every single day to East table we're playing tonight has uh, an Italian bottom. So keep that in mind as you uh, as you see these. They call them Big Button D. Yes, Italian do you know, bottom. Do you know, want to know what they call the tables that uh, uh, do not have the uh, Italian bottom layout? They're called non-Italian bottoms. I really... So is it... So, Pin, you didn't tell me... I'm like, oh, you didn't tell me that pinball lived and died on Italian bottoms. It's true. I thought you'd enjoy that. I do enjoy that. That's wonderful. We're at the oh end of 1989. God, and the first and some say best Italian bottom is Robocop himself. <laughs> now here's no a license babes, for you. No babes. No babes. No, babes. no football. Okay. 
no Playboy, no Time Machine. This is just based on a movie. And this is what set Data East on the course that they followed over the next several years, because I think this table was very popular. It says RoboCop. Anyone play this one? This got a lot of distribution way back when. Listen, you shouldn't have said that, but it really does look like RoboCop's peeing blood a little bit. <laughs> what? No. Oh, God, you're... I'm just trying to have a wholesome conversation about Italian bottoms, and you're putting RoboCop's piss into the equation. No one wants to hear about that. At this point, thanks to the uh, the CPU and ROM setup, you start to get really advanced rule sets. You start to get actual objectives. There's an arrest mode. Who are we arresting? I assume criminals. I mean, that's what I remember from RoboCop. He's a robot who's a cop. There's criminals. That's, that's the whole plot, right? I think so, yeah. Okay. I think he nailed it. What are the core tenets that uh, RoboCop has to uphold, Alex? Uh... The law is good. That's right. That's one. Um, we caught a meal. Good. The innocent. Catch a meal. That's one of them. And catch a meal. Yes. <laughs> Uphold the public public trust. Protect the innocent. Arrest a meal. Uh, this is. Uh, I was gonna call it pinball X. This isn't pinball X. It's this like... is visual pinball X. Oh, close enough. It's visual pinball X. I recommend looking up, looking into it. Uh, if you need technical help, I'm not. I I call not it. Yeah. <laughs> it's really hard. Good luck. I saw that slick Italian bottom move you did. Oh, thank you. That's yeah. That's what they call it when you do that. A slick Italian bottom move. It was you. You 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 lightly touched it, so it went down the right lane. The feather touch of an Italian pinball fan who's a bottom. Yeah. There's, like, one European fan who is losing their mind every time we mention that. <laughs> yeah, they're going apeshit. And for that fan, uh, Enjoy you're your welcome. Bottoms. <laughs> what am I supposed to say? You you can't tell me that knowledge. It was kind of a loaded question, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just thought you'd be knowledgeable. About a No! I'm... I know nothing about pinball. All I know about pinball is what I've learned from uh, going to pinballs and uh, what I've learned from you. You have been the pinball whisperer in my life, and at no point did you tell me about Italian bottoms. You think you would? You think that would have been like one of the first things you brought up to me? That was a that was a recent discovery for me too. I told you all these pinball streams I watch. Uh, they're very educational. You learn all about Italian bottoms. Thank you, I asked. 25 bits. Apparently this table's ramp lets you do sweet jumps. Yeah, yeah. At the top, there's mm -hmm. you notice there's no uh, completed ramp there. You have to hit it really fast in order to make the jump. Let's see if I can do that. Yeah, there you go. Sick. I called my shot. I saved pinball. Did you hear in the news about how they uh, saved pinball? There was a big court case where they were trying to decide if these were gambling machines or if there was actual skill. And they brought in an actual pinball wizard, a guy who was good at pinball. I think it was just some guy who worked at Bally. And he was all like, check this out, judge, I'm gonna hit this ball up here. And then he did that. And the judge was like, okay, you win. Pinball's legal. <laughs> That's literally how it happened. That is so sick. So you're gonna be the one who's called on when they try to make pinball illegal again, right? Oh, God, I hate to be put under that kind of pressure. <laughs> Because if I lose, like, everyone's gonna be mad at me. Yeah, I was gonna say, a lot of streamers will be pissed off. The don't, Pinball Hall of Fame will be like, hey, Danny, what the hell? Don't ask me to save pinball. But just imagine the position that guy was in. Like, was he confident or was he, like, really rattled? <laughs> you really have to wonder. Like, an entire <laughs> industry, <laughs> it was based on whether he could make a shot or not. Uh, the guy's name was Roger Sharp. He worked at Mitt Williams, and apparently there's a drunk history episode about it if you want more info. Oh, good. Yeah, you should check that out. Thanks, Roger. It's, uh... I appreciate y'all. Thank you for saving pinball. Yeah. If it weren't for you, we wouldn't be able to do this. All right, Dick Jones is going to be arrested. He's the big bad. He's a cop killer. Is this our first multi-ball of the evening? Sick. I fucking... 
can love Danny East. Pinball is really cool, Danny. <laughs> Pinball is so much cooler than I've been thinking. I'm really bad at it, which is why I don't play it a lot, but... This Dude, has been one of ball. the sicker streams we've had. Oh, you don't even know. Maybe you don't even know. Maybe it's because of all the Flash games I've played, but this is a way better use of a license than any Flash game. There should have been a, a lemonade mouth pinball machine. <laughs> Whatever the fuck that is. It's a Disney Channel original movie, Danny. Only the best of the best. Man, I want to keep this credit going because this is definitely a PB for me, but we should probably move on. Yeah. So you can see the direction they're starting to go in, uh, especially with licensing. They have actual sound clips from the movie, often uh, the actual likenesses of the actors. And it's only thanks to advances of pinball at this time that they were able to deliver that because of the whole digitized voice thing. If there's no ROMs, you can't have digitized voice. What good is a pinball machine without someone yelling at you the entire time? Honestly, it's terrible. I like, I, I really, Ballyhoo would have been much better if they hired like some vaudeville guy to just stand there and be like, you got a point, kid! Some guy just saying, the wrecking crew is here, the wrecking crew is here! Mm-hmm. Thank you, Zachar, for the 11-month resub. Almost a whole last year. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Sneaker Nuts, for the 25 bits. All right, good news, everybody. We're out of the 80s, and we're in the 90s, and oh my god, this shit is about to hit the fan. Not just yet, though. Uh, the next couple of machines are going to seem a little bit normal before things really, really, really go off the rails, so please enjoy this brief, uh, brief period of sanity. Let's play uh, The Phantom of the Opera. Oh, fancy. Is this based on the Andrew Lloyd Webber, or...? I want to say, yeah, it's based on the, uh... uh... Look, the babe, babe has gone from 0 to 100 in one table. Look yep, at this. Babe alert. Uh, something about this table that's funny is that the voices are super, super loud, and everything else is barely audible, so unfortunately you can't hear the, the really good music on this table. Sorry, folks. I am a phantom of the opera. Let's see how much I can turn this up without really getting blaring. Okay, so this is just based off of the public domain fan of the opera. Uh, okay. okay, they were just building off the, the popularity of the, the musical at this point. Mm -hmm. That is the Data East I know. I like that. Magic Mirror. <laughs> this is another table I played uh, back when it was new, and I definitely remember Magic Mirror. Come on, hit it again. If I met the Phantom of the Opera, I wouldn't let him seduce me. I just beat him up. Rip to you, but I'm different. Okay, fair enough. I just, I'm sorry. The Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, sorry, man. <laughs> uh, he just seems like a, a jerk. I'm, I, I've always felt that way. Like the Phantom of the Opera. I'm sorry. I don't care about your tragic backstory. Leave me alone. But he's no? a Phantom of the Opera. Be a Phantom of my ass for all I care. <laughs> Be a Phantom of the Opera on your own time. I Not only can I not fix the Phantom of the Opera, I just think he'd whine a lot. I'm sorry. He's, out of all the out of all the classic movie monsters, he's the whiniest. I don't think he's a monster, Alex. Well, they always include him with, like, the mummy and shit. Magic Mirror. He's not a universal monster, either. You're thinking of uh, the fish man. No, I'm not thinking of Gilman. I, I, I have seen the Phantom of the Opera kind of, uh, kind of, uh, associated Magic with Mirror. the Universal Monsters. I swear! Anyone want to back Alex up here? Or is he just off his rocker? There is a Phantom Universal Monster? Okay, thank you so much. All right, well, I guess I'm the one who's off their Magic rocker. Mirror. Fuck me, then. Fuck the stream. Why do I even... No, no I'm Danny, no, please... Please, it's just the fan of the opera. We okay. will not let him tear us apart. That's what he wanted. I told you, this is why I want to beat his ass. Man, I want to open up that magic mirror. That's how you get uh, the multi-ball. Crap door. Shoot the catwalk. But that's where I do my little turn. <laughs> yeah. Aw. Oh, didn't have the grace period. Sometimes when uh, machines are counting down the amount of time you have left in a mode, they'll give you a few seconds afterwards, but not Data East. They're rough and tumble. They don't care about your feelings. They're just like, here's a lingerie, babe. Don't ask about it. It's fine. I 
love that ear piercing scream at the end of every ball. Shoot the catwalk. This is a mechanic I've never really been sure about. Did you see what it said? Double score by shooting the ramp. That's that can kind of be a lot of points. <laughs> So Data East was big and bold. They were making big plays with design, with licenses. Uh, maybe not this one, being public domain and all. Look at those music notes. Oh, that's cute. Trapdoor. That. Oh. Magic mirror. I wish you could have broken that magic mirror, honey. I wish so too. See, fuck the Phantom. Get out of here, dude. Fucking Phantom of the Opera. More like Phantom of my ass. <laughs> Let us continue with uh, a license that may be a little bit more familiar than Phantom of the Opera. They got King Kong on this. Data East is now an official oh, King Kong licensee. The eighth wonder of the world. He's the eighth wonder of the world. It's official? Yeah. What, what year was this? Uh, 1990. Was there what? like Was there like a reissue no. or a sequel or a no, remake? No, there wasn't. Or... The there, was no, the there was no King Kong mania running wild. Are you sure? I'm 100% sure. Chat backed me up on this. Do you, do you remember? Ooh, I gotta any, turn this uh, down a little bit. Any King Kong uh, uh, shit from 1990? <laughs> King I, Kong shit. Well, not his. You not well, you, the paraphernalia, ephemera, okay. ads. I remember nothing in 1990 about. Game I was Andrew. I was vaguely aware of King Kong. They had a colorized version that came out. Okay, okay. Blast his ass! Oh, I just blasted King Kong with a missile. Why would you do that? He had it coming. He'll climb our buildings and get away with it. I'm sorry, but we're focusing all our attention on King Kong when the Phantom of the Opera is kidnapping babes and no one cares? Yeah. I mean, King Kong kidnaps babes, but like... Babes are an infinitely renewable resource. We'll never have a future where we're out of babes, Alex. We know this. It'll never happen. We'll never have to invent a time machine that goes back in time. I've noticed in a lot of tables, uh, the way you enable locks is to complete the basic uh, drop targets. They tended to stick to a particular formula for the first few years. King Kong is the Phantom of the Jungle. Ooh, good point. Do you like that miniature pachinko machine in the upper right? Yeah, what? Radar, scanner. Ah, oh, fuck, Kong's out there. Why'd we need radar for this? I was gonna say, you Kong does not seem hard to find. If King Kong was in downtown Austin, I could find him. And I wouldn't blow him up either. I'd be nice about it. Well, Alex, why don't we put you in charge of the King Kong response team? Well, why don't you? I could, I could do it. You shoot the, the ball into a little box up there. That's really cute. This table's kind of neat. I never really put much time into it. Is that a football near the, the bottom of the flippers where it says go ape? No. No, that's a shield. Oh, okay. But I like that it says go ape. We were all going ape back then for King Kong. All I, right. there I don't a, know. There was a King Kong uh, movie in 1986, so this could be trying to. Was that King Kong Lives? Yeah, okay. Could be. Maybe the license was cheap. I just assumed King Kong license was cheap at the time. Maybe. Notice how every, every so often there's just a really loud explosion noise. Maybe they got it on discount when they got, like, Phantom of the Opera. Got anything else? They're like, want King Kong? They're like, yeah, sure. Is that available as like a two pack? Mm -hmm. Double deal, two licenses for the price of one. I don't think I ever saw this one. I've never even seen this at uh, modern yeah. pinball arcades. Yeah, I've literally never seen this in a while. I didn't even know this existed until this moment. Still, in a subtle way, you're starting to see Data East mainstays start to become apparent. Mainly, I'm noticing in the fact that there's really loud explosion noises at random. Expect to hear more of that. That's kind of a statement. 
people of pinball, isn't it? Yeah. Want to grab someone's attention just to make a lot of loud explosions. This was an unreleased prototype. Okay. Was it really? I thought this was released. I really like that miniature pachinko machine. That's such a neat little detail. Alright, we got the locks ready. Let's see if we can lock up this beast. So mean. Free him. Alex would have King Kong walk in the streets free. I would. I would. Your attack ad's not going to work on me for my re-election campaign, because everyone in my constituency loves King Kong. There are only nine tables made for this. Damn. Wow, but the rule set is so complete and the D&D animations are pretty good. Get ready, he's escaping. I thought he said he's got a gun. Yeah, exactly. When I meet King Kong, I just am like, yeah, you, you, you uh, hear some bananas? Uh, That'd be a hell of a twist if King Kong got a gun. <laughs> like a really huge gun. I was gonna say, the gun would have to be huge! Trigger on we would. Size. A coconut gun, yes, exactly. <laughs> it fires in spurts. We would well and truly be fucked if King Kong got a King so Kong sized gun. I hope that day never happens. Never give King Kong a gun. So there are several unreleased Data East games. Uh, one of them was based on Mad Magazine. And, uh, really? You know uh, Funhouse with the dummy head? <laughs> it would have been just exactly like that but with Alfred E. Newman as Holy the dummy shit. head. It's a shame we missed out on that one. I would have played the fuck out of that. I love Mad Magazine. I'm gonna let this go. I'm being too good at pinball tonight. I should I should be shittier. What a shame this didn't get released. Pretty feature complete. Well, what did get released in 1990? Oh, I see why they didn't release King Kong. They had another license that they figured would be more popular. I guess in some universe, King Kong is less popular than Back to the Future. Oh, hey! It's a sequel to The Time Machine that takes you back in time! Back to the Future! <laughs> I see you're familiar. First, there was Back to the Future. Then came Back to the Future 2 plus 3. That's 5. Now play Back to the Future Pinball. I saw this one back in the day. This one... This one got around, this machine. It sure did! This was everywhere! Mm hmm Thank you, Sneaker Nets, uh, 25 bits. I'd also play an onion uh, pinball table. Yeah, why not? The time is right. Mm-hmm. Back to the future! Let's turn this down just a little bit. And yeah, they didn't get the likeness rights uh, to either... Yeah, they got the voices, but not the uh, <laughs> the likenesses, which are two separate licenses, if you ever have to deal with that. But notice what they're doing here. They're trying to replicate the film score. Okay, this is pretty... this is sick. Okay. It's okay. got the FM synth theme. Listen to that. It's got objectives that uh, vaguely copy the events of the movie. Danny, this is Nightcore. I don't know where yet. I haven't decided. I've got an invention, but I don't know what to call it. It's something where you go back in time. Hopefully I can lock a couple of balls here, because you'll be able to hear more of the music. Cool. Danny, this is cool! It is, isn't it? All it took was a few years for them to get up to speed with this. There we go. Look at this. Oh my god, it's Huey Lewis! And the news. Oh, my boys! My boys! I love them. That's the power of the thing that takes you back in time. <laughs> wow, okay. I'm glad you played this, because you know what? I like pinball now. Did I finally get you hooked? You did. I just needed to see the Playboy game and uh, hear Huey Lewis <laughs> the in the uh, Playboy form. The pinball game really did change me uh, <laughs> for the better. What was it about Playboy that won you over? <laughs> I would have to say the fact that it was created at all and the fact that it was somehow less horny looking 
than some of the art on the Phantom of the Opera machine. Uh, Revenant ZZ Top's double back is in this game if you start up the uh, Back to the Future 3 mode. Oh my they God. thought of everything. I really gotta lock this one though. There we go. Now listen to this shit. Are you kidding me? Isn't that great? Sick. Gotta get back! This is genuinely their best table. Now you're starting to see. I'll make you a Data East fan yet. Oh, I'm a fan, all right. Sorry to cut you off, uh, Huey. Gotta get back! <laughs> the thing is, that's the only part of the song that could fit in the ROM. <laughs> I think that would have been better song if uh, the only thing they said was gotta get back in time. I agree. I think that we should contact Mr. Uh, Lewis and let him know. Yeah, let's remake his music. He'd love that. Fix it for uh, modern tastes. There's one thing Huey Lewis famously loves is when people uh, take his songs and redo them for anyone. <laughs> it's true. Oh, he finally decided where he wanted to go. Now let's brick this shot. Ah, oh, fuck, I got it. Andy, you're really good at pinball. I just like this table. It's pretty good. So by this point, you're starting to see a regular multi-ball multi mode. It's so hard to talk when you play pinball. You're starting to see more objectives that lead up to the multi-ball. Eventually you start to activate multiple modes that stack with each other, multiplying the points you can get. But believe it or not, this is still relatively simple as far as uh, Dady's pinballs go. Hey McFly! And that's the story of how Marty McFly went back in time. Oh shit, I have another ball! No, we're done. As I say, you drained that ball, no! Sorry, Doc Brown. This flux capacitor is a fucked capacitor now. Danny. I got the Biff's Casino bonus. A severe thunderstorm is heading for Hill Valley. Now put in another quarter, dipshit. Thanks for the encouragement, dude. <laughs> Back to the future. And that was just the start of some real bullshit that you're about to see. Uh, their next table, also a pretty good choice for a license, I'd say. Uh, this is The Simpsons. Wait, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. I've, I've seen this table, but I've never played it. Or see, like, I've seen it in existence, but I've never seen it, like, being played. Voted best game of the 1990 Amoa show. Oh, I remember Amoa. Mm-hmm. Amusement machines or, uh, ass. That's what that stands for. <laughs> How's our volume here? This looks okay. Yeah, it's season one art, too. I love it. Back during, uh... God, sorry. Some of you probably were not alive during Simpsons Mania. Do you remember Bart Mania? Bart was huge back when this show first started. People didn't give a shit about the other Simpsons. It was just all Bart. But uh, this being based on season one kind of limits what they can do. You start to see characters that don't really appear in other seasons. Like Big uh, Bleeding Gums Murphy. Yeah, Bleeding Gums Murphy is there on the right slingshot. For a 14 month reset, appreciate that. Thank you. They're mentioning Princess Cashmere. Yeah, you know, Calico. Princess Cashmere. <laughs> the recurring character we all know and love. 
who Homer uh, danced with in that one season one episode. It's always funny to see really early Simpsons merchandise, like those fucked up NES games. I just can't hit the crusty ramp. Lock the balls for three ball fun, man. Got it. I don't want to meet that guy. I like how Marge's hair is one of the light up bulbs. <laughs> ah, I blew it. Bart really shit talks you on this table. He really does. Sorry that that uh, hey man, lower left uh, season one Homer is killing me. Mm -hmm. The classic dancing Homer. Before mm -hmm. there was a real dancing Homer. Whoa, mama. People loved the joke of Bart Simpson rude in the 1990s. Oh yeah, that was all they needed to laugh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There wasn't. Yes, there was a Simpsons moral panic. I remember that. They were like Bart is teaching our children to be terrible. Eat my short. <laughs> Thanks, Bart. <laughs> Wasn't it uh, President Bush who said, like, Americans should be more like the Waltons and less like the Simpsons? I want to say that was either Bush or Quayle, yeah, but it was definitely during the Bush administration, the first Bush administration. And then the Simpsons famously clapped back. Uh, click here for more. <laughs> you won't believe what happens Come next. I am sucking ass at this, but... This is a table that got a lot of distribution, much like Back to the Future. Some of you probably even played this. You may still be able to find a machine at your local uh, pinball arcade. Okay, was Barbara Bush who said it? Okay, that makes sense. That's yeah. a real Barbara Bushism. I can say that, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. I just didn't know if in Texas you'd get in trouble for saying bad things about Barbara Bush. I don't know, probably. Okay, that's cool. We're gonna get sanctioned. That's fine. I've, I've had worse. Hey man, we're both underachievers. Bart, you little scamp. Come on, three Liberty Bells. <laughs> hey man, we're both underachievers. Sorry. Bart, you immense fuckhead. This wasn't the, the last Simpsons pinball machine. There was also Simpsons Pinball Party by Stern. Mm -hmm. I haven't played that one. I hear it's better than this, though. You sneaker nuts for the 100 bits yeah they they hated they hated the simpsons because the simpsons was winning exactly yeah it got popular so that's something you got to get scared Good of point. if it's popular hey, we're in 1991 and we have checkpoint and look what's in the upper left corner we've graduated from lcd readouts to <laughs> to full on to full-on dot matrix displays, also known as DMDs. Hey, this, you know why they were doing this? This is Operation Desert Storm! Yeah. Operation Desert Storm! This what? table, I told you! This table had a limited run of one table that was reskinned to be about Desert Storm. I'm not kidding. Uh, unfortunately, that is not simulated in a Visual Pinball X. We would we would be playing it if it was, you believe me. I have no Yo, idea if there's a... There's got to be like a Storm and Norman uh, multi-ball mode or that something. There's all these music stations, Danny. Jazz. So you got a DMD? You got selectable music tracks? got a big ass machine that's bigger and flashier than anything that's ever come before. This is the start of the end for Data East, because eventually they were acquired by Sega. But we have entered the uh, the final era of Data East, and oh my god. Things are going to ramp up so quickly once they get DMD technology. A Desert Storm callout, I feel... Mm, see that? That's nostalgia for me. Honk honk. Support our troops. I haven't played much of this one. I never saw this in real life. No idea how popular it was. 
One, one, one million points. Okay, Devil Ray says there's a reskin version in Astoria themed to Les Schwab tires. Bumpers look like slabs. Cool. That's 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 awesome. What a good pinball table. I think this one has a weird magnet or something in the middle because I'm noticing some real bonkers physics. Yeah, your ball's kind of weird. Excuse you. Sorry. Anyways, if you think of it's 25 bits, yes, your tax dollars at work for this game. <laughs> Man, if only, if only Data East got tax exempt status. Man, I'm doing pretty good. I think I won the race. Do you think... What music do you think NASCAR drivers listen to? They probably don't listen to any music, right? I I would I would think, like... Some kind of inscrutable EDM or... Noise I think punk. it depends on the driver. What do you think Jeff Gordon listens to? Oh, he's, he's a Miku head? He, he gives me Miku vibes. Don't ask me why. It's either that or, like, Drop Jams, Volume 3. Man, Not the and, other volumes, just Volume 3. Yeah, me and him have more in common than I thought. <laughs> Someone put me in touch with Jeff Gordon. We'll do a Project Diva stream. From the front seat of his car. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get a perfect on Extra Extreme Mode? While riding without a seatbelt in Jeff Gordon's car. Hey, I mean, this sounds like a really good YouTube video that would only get like 200 views, which is such a shame. Yeah, and I'd also die during it, so. Yeah, I wouldn't have liked that. Not I'd a great like payoff. It's gotta be a really good video if I'm gonna die during it. We're talking like at least a thousand views. Unfortunately, Data East never touched the uh, Children's Television Workshop license. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no Sesame Street, no Muppets. Nothing cool like that. Just race cars. This machine's okay. You can have a good time with it if you want. But I'll know it as the first DMD enabled Data East machine. They're kind of going wild with it. Oh, they are. Man, big score. Shame I gotta leave this machine. Because we got to play the next machine in 1991, which was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, shit. That's a good license. They're just 91. like, they're like hit after hit with these licenses. There's mm -hmm. like no bullshit. Oh, that's that's weird. Teenage. Oh, yeah, this table was kind of fucked up. This was the best uh, recreation I could find, including that weird space at the left. Sorry about that. Awesome. I kind of love it, Danny. I'm sorry. <laughs> They didn't get the original Ninja Turtles actors for this. It's just some guy at Data East going, Excellent! Ninja that call-out probably took an entire ROM chip. I really like the pizza. The pizza is a physical spinning object, I think. It can affect the, the way your ball goes. Is that really cutting out? April O'Neil. Is it really cutting out the babe? That's so sad. She is on the back glass and she's tied up, so you get that at least. Alright, okay, so we've had more babes than non babe uh, back glasses. You it's, know? it's true. You see that rat? There was a rat on the DMD. Oh shit, I need to pay attention to the DMD. Yeah, a lot of the best elements of the tables you're about to see are on the DMDs. Look at that pizza spin. This is the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle the others don't talk to. This is like, uh, Banksy. Hey dudes, I'm here in the sewer. Can you, can you lend me some money? Did you say he was like Banksy? No, his name is Banksy. Because I was trying to think of a name of another artist. And the first name I thought of was Banksy. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. No, it's really funny. You couldn't think of any other no. like, Italian bottom to name. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 are the Italian artists uh, that the Ninja Turtles got their names from? Are they all Italian bottoms? That's the question yes. we gotta we gotta ask. 
Thank you, JoeBush.net. I missed this for the 39 month reset. Did I miss the My Girl table? God, if I <laughs> That would be cool. Bees are lit. Oh no! Bee sting multi ball! <laughs> I love those extremely primitive animations on the DMD. It's so, it's so quaint. They level up their DMD game really quick. She's got a lot of callouts. I was gonna say, this is pretty good. That is so adorable the way he's swinging his nunchuck. Aww. Oh, it's so good. They had so few, few pixels to work with. Huge black box on the side because this was the only version uh, Danny could find before. Yeah, it's fucked up. Sorry about yeah. that. You gotta compromise a little when you're looking for visual pinball representations of tables. At least it's not like Playboy. If only they made a uh, machine based off of Radio Flyer. It was almost a Super Nintendo game, mm -hmm. which I still can't believe. That's what you get when you just scoop up licenses. Imagine if Ocean made pinball tables. Holy shit. There wouldn't be pinball anymore. Oh, yeah! Here goes the ROM. That was, yeah, that was a whole ROM right there, for sure. You're not allowed to sing that song anymore, it's against the law. You gotta have a recreated version now. People asking, you know how there's horny mahjong? Is there horny pinball? Well, first of all, I'd say that all pinball is horny pinball. Um, there is one very famous designer who was a little bit hornier than the rest of the designers, which is saying a lot when it comes to pinball. I forget his name. It was the guy who did a Bride of Pinbot. Mm. Which, at current, is probably the most horny pinball table ever made. He wanted to make a machine called Zingy Bingy, which I will not elaborate on. That is something you can do your own research on. <laughs> that would have been a very adult pinball machine. But uh, his vision did not come to life. Python Angela. Yeah, there. that's his name. The horniest man alive. As voted by Time Magazine. plays good too what the fuck all these tables are fun like they're a little bit basic and a little bit janky <laughs> ninja ninja we know about big juicy melons we don't discuss big juicy melons, <laughs> big juicy melons. Ninja. Uh, bummer dude bummer Dude. And just for good measure. Power. This is what they took from us. Tammy. The people who made you re record the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme song to be put in future media. I'm looking at you, Cowabunga Collection. After that, what's the next biggest license of 1991 you could pick up? How about. Batman. Mm -hmm. And The Simpsons, and Back to the Future, and, yeah. and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. You see why they became so big so quickly? <laughs> they just, they they were at it when it came to these licenses. Uh, this table is pretty flashy, so beware of that. Okay. Winners don't use drugs. Okay, got it. I bet now. You ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Oof, look how flashy that is. Yeah, I want to check chat. Music's cool. This is really cool music. Oh, it's a bat cave. I was trying to figure out what that big thing in the middle was. It's just like a big lump of plastic. 
That's the bat cave. I like bat cave. I will say, what's her face looking fairly chaste? They yeah. Didn't, they didn't. They didn't babe her up. They you could have. I mean? They really could have. Mm -hmm. Vicky Vale, thank you, thank you. This is hard to play. They gotta work on this one. Let's see if I can hit the Joker. There we go. You'll never believe what happened to me today. Did you hear Jack Nicholson? Yeah. Did they really license that? Uh, probably. This is starting to sound more like a Data East machine, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. The random gunshots and explosions. <laughs> Wait till they get a load of blam, 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 kaboom, <laughs> blam. There really should have been a Batman and Robin pinball table. There is a Batman Forever table, and it's made by the same people who made this. So I gotta, I gotta play that someday. <laughs> Calm down, machine. Jesus. Shoot, Flukum, I'm Danny. I shot it. Okay. This is exciting. Jesus Christ! It's pretty sick. Oh God! Now imagine this being played at the arcade at a louder volume you could possibly imagine. <laughs> just and imagine a whole row of these machines all competing for your attention, just going off with gunshots constantly. You gotta admire Data East. Fuck. They're cool as hell. Everyone in the arcade Joker fight. <laughs> it's like that uh, Joker gas he uses in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Batman had really nice pouty lips. I don't get that. When did we move away from that? Mm -hmm. We wanted a more gritty Batman. That ball sucked. Oh, okay, Sorry. good. When you lose a ball instantly like that, without a ball save, that's what you call a house ball. Because uh, the house always wins. I mean... That is true. This is essentially gambling. I sure hope these things I'm saying are correct. I hope I'm not miseducating you on uh, pinball. Ooh, in the mouth. He stuck out his tongue at me! Is that what he's doing? Yeah! It's disgusting. <laughs> Steep angle on this table. So nice, close. Uh, nice Batman. We're so close to my favorite era of Data East. We're so close I can taste it. Oh, stupid bat computer. Never on my side. So this uh this next license is for the twenty fifth anniversary of a beloved sci fi show. Of course I'm talking about Battlestar Galactic No, I'm talking about Star Trek. I really thought it was going to be Battlestar Galactica. How dare you? Scotty here. Oh, hi. Oh, the... <laughs> I didn't realize where I put the DMD. It makes them look like they all have their shirts off. It does! They're being censored. Censorship in my Star Trek. This is another thing you start to hear. Common, uh, recognizable theme songs given an FM synth beat. Yeah, I kind of love this. Mm -hmm. 
Shabby Jack. I'm gonna win. Cody here. Engineers log. Supplemental. Main power down. We need dilithium. Shut the fuck up, Scotty. We're going. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> he was screaming. Yeah. I like that they couldn't get Shatner, so they just had to have uh, Scotty in there narrating the table. Now this is a proper noisy Data East table. And it's Star Trek of all things. Yeah, this table's screaming at you. And look what we have here near the slingshots. You see what I see? There's babes. Those are babes! They're classic Star Trek babes! Okay! Mm -hmm. Alright, Data East, you're back on track. Who's that on the left? She's built. Is that Uhura? I think so. Is it? I can't tell from back here. I think so. She got a six pack. Something for everyone on this table. Who's the who's on the right? That is I wanna say just a random babe in Just a, just a random just babe. Just a random babe, get out of here. <laughs> What if it was Shatner in, like, a bikini? You know, Star Trek was never brave enough to give us that, but I think it's time. I kind of like this layout, the little moving target in the middle. You sometimes have to get in there for certain modes. That and the theme song is really driving. It makes you want to do good at pinball. Have we figured out who the babe was? Do we know her? Okay. Janice Rand. Okay. No idea who that is, but I'm glad she's here. Sorry, they were doing that one music in yeah. Star Trek, but it was all on <laughs> Yep. I'm not much of a Star Trek fan, but this table kicks ass. This, it's like... It's got so much energy. Yeah. Let's get that dilithium crystal. We got it. Sorry, Scotty. It's just so fast and everything flows so well. And it's screaming at you the entire time. This is why pinball is so addictive. Not because of the babes. Well, it's a little bit because of the babes, but... Little babes. Little babes. A little babes. I just noticed the, the Shatner peeking out from the left side of the screen. You see him in silhouette? Yeah, he's here. hiding. He's like, hey. <laughs> Got it. Oh, I didn't even mention it, but this table has a launch button instead of a, a plunger. That's what a lot of tables at this time did. Because plungers would become weak over time, and often you'd be unable to launch the ball at all. Thank you everyone for posting your peek emotes. He is peeking. He is. Shatter peek. Oh, there is a Nimoy on the right side under the word anniversary. You're oh, right. he's peeking too. Oh, they're shy. We're trying to look at the babes. I saw William Shatner on Columbo the other day. Uh, for whatever reason, I think the writers really had it in for him because part of the plot was uh, him involving uh, involving him wearing platform shoes because he's short. Oh my god. So and I have to wonder, like, was he really upset at the, the writers or something? Because that's been a, a famous thing of contention, how tall William Shatner is. He's apparently like 5'6". I'm as tall? As, as, as Shatner? Mm -hmm. But on Wikipedia, which uh, people uh, suspect he himself or his uh, lackeys edited, that claims he's 5'11". Mm. Anyway, now that William Shatner is good and pissed off at the Retro Pals, we should probably move on. <laughs> so that is the end of 1991. Oh my god, Alex. 1992. They start to license just pretty much anything. Fuck it. Hook. What? Hook the pinball table. Okay. We're making a pinball table out of hook.
Hook, hook. I was going to say, was he okay? He sounded like he had a, a sore throat. I think he's choking. <laughs> Ruffio is in second place. Thudbutt is in third. Mm -hmm. Ace. Mr. Smee. Toodles. Now they're really stepping... Hey, 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 Pie. <laughs> they're really stepping up their DMD animations now. But remember, winners don't use drugs. He hates Peter Pan, but remember, winners don't use drugs. Have to fly, have to fight, have to crow, have to shake Maggie, have to shake Jack. I can turn this up a little, I think. They were really banking on this being a big movie. And I guess it was successful, but, um... Not too well remembered these days. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Is the Hook fandom stronger than ever? It, it had a resurgence. It did have a resurgence, but I think it's plateaued again. Damn. I think that uh, people... They, they gave it a second shot because they liked uh, that one guy on Tumblr who was in... Uh, is that why? Yeah, and then they just were like, no, it's not that good. As BBH mentions, this table's got jams. This is when they really beefed up their sound engine. They got extra sound channels. Now the music all sounds like this. And yeah, now the tables constantly talk. It's not just occasional call-outs. It's constant talk. Sorry, I'm just... There's so many voices. Yeah, it's, it's overload for sure. Getting visual overload. Your ears are getting overloaded. You're being overloaded with love for the Hook franchise. See, it makes kind of sense that Newsies had a resurgence because they gave that uh, a musical, like a Broadway musical. And then they've released the Broadway musical as a movie, so it's just, it's really weird to me. Is that what happened? Yeah, yeah, and it had a resurgence in popularity with people being like, wow, Newsies is so yeah. uh, based or whatever, I don't know. Is Newsies based? Is Newsies based? Folks weigh in. Newsies, based, or cringe? It's saying based, based, or cringe now. I don't know. <laughs> what right You can fly. You can fight. You can <laughs> I sure can. <laughs> Alex, if you believe in yourself, you can... <laughs> the one thing the previous pinball tables have been missing. Big skull? Just a big ass skull. Exactly. Damn. See, I've only been playing this for like 90 seconds and I'm all jazzed up. I'm all excited about the hook license. You're all like, I want to see hook again. And then you're going to watch it be disappointed as always. Extra ball. I've only seen it once. Did you see it in theaters? I think I did. I did too. It was a motion picture event. We all had to see it. It We're was all required legally. Yeah. Okay, so hook is based. Newsies is cringe. Okay. Hmm. Okay, that sounds Got reasonable. It. We'll have to do an official Google form survey. This too loud for you? Do I need to turn it down? I'm okay. Okay. It's, it is a little loud, but I think I'm okay. I can I can wait until. Damn. Yeah. You're doing really well at Hook. Thank you. Hook is based. Newsies is cringe. Okay. People are saying this. Some guy with a Newsies avatar is gonna be so mad at me on YouTube. <laughs> He's gonna comment on this video and be like, "What the fuck, dude?" What the newsies ever do to you other than deliver the news? I mean, fair point.
Have we explored all there is to see in the book? I think that we were, uh, we were hooked out, as it were. There's a lot of squawks, a lot of yelling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't call them jobbers. We have, yeah. It's the most insulting thing you can say. Danny, I know you're anti-newsies, but I'm pro-newsies. What would the world be like without Captain Hook? What indeed? What would the world be like without Newsies? Exactly the same. Got him. Damn. You're so mean. <laughs> now it's time for their big hit of 1992. This was their big breakthrough hit that defined all of their releases after this point. What a table this is. Lethal Weapon 3. Okay, okay. I've seen this table. We're back in it. What can I say? What can you even say about Lethal Weapon 3? An incredible machine. Look at those likenesses in the middle. That looks like neither Mel Gibson nor Danny Glover. <laughs> the photo in the upper right, of course, is, uh, that's them, but... Look at the Joe Pesci with the ramp in the, uh, the middle right. <laughs> oh my god, he's so happy! <laughs> Pure Data East artistry on display here. Here comes trouble. <laughs> That's how I sound. Yeah. So you can choose from the film score, Sharp Dressed Man by ZZ Top, or CNC Music Factory. Of course we're doing CNC Music Factory. Police off. You have no authority. Get to the music. Oh. This was a, a table that instead of using a plunger or a launch button, it used a pistol grip. So you would uh, just grip this pistol and pull the trigger every time you wanted to shoot the ball. They got away. Just further amping up the experience. I am sucking ass. I'm sorry, Lethal Weapon 3. Everybody freeze. I'm sorry that you're disappointing uh, Mr. Lethal Weapon. What Leo want? Leo, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay, okay. Have you seen Leo okay, Weapon 3? Okay, okay, I have not. Either. Okay, okay, okay. You liking these bumpers? Okay, okay, okay. 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 You're really getting me to appreciate pinball, I just want to say. There's a scene from the movie. Now. Down in front. Oh. <laughs> I keep saying sick. Sick is the word of the night, and that's what, that was sick. Fight. Oh, it's time to fight! Mash those flipper buttons. No, I won. Okay, good. My life bar was on the right. Oh, okay. There's you just... How can I... How, how do I describe this? A chaotic energy, I guess, to these tables? And it's just uniquely Data East, because Bally and Williams were all, like, really restrained in comparison. Okay, okay, okay. Like, what do they have? A talking dummy head? Who cares? This machine has constant gunshots and a, a pistol grip. CNC Music Factory. Okay, okay, okay. Joe Pesci? I love the Joe Pesci. I think more pinball okay, machines okay. need Joe Pesci. Okay, okay, okay. I hope I can get more film clips. Those aren't even interactive, it's just like Dot Matrix uh, adaptations of film scenes from the movie. There's one where they like throw a toilet out the window. <laughs> Tribal. It's a 
Williams did something dirty at this point. They decided they own the copyright to the word multi-ball. I'm not shitting you. Really? So that's why Data East had to invent new terms like M-ball or tri-ball. They were scared. That's what they were. They were scared of Data East. And they should have been. Go. No. There we go. Nice. Now. That is so cool. Kick ass. Oh, we got the restart too. Let's fucking go. Tri yeah, tri ball doesn't sound as cool as multi ball. How yeah. those balls just. Lost all the balls. Danny, your ball is gone. No. No. Official says sneaker nuts with 25 bits. Pinball is fine art. I agree. It's about time. Thank you. They got away. Whew. I feel like I've been through a, a car chase after playing this machine. Good lord. Well, good news. The tables after this do not get any less intense. They only dial up the intensity even more. Oh, good. Next up. Oh, you know what? Let's do something a little different. So, you've seen uh, Lethal Weapon 3, right? You've seen the uh, the table layout? Mm -hmm. Sometimes they repurpose these table layouts for uh, other things. Often those things are very, very, very specifically targeted. As in, they would make tables with... Uh, DMD animations and sounds and tab table layouts specifically for one person. In this case, that person was Aaron Spelling. <laughs> no. Stop to bin, do the crocket, mach up the ganze frontier, oh yeah. Just like it says on the side, only three tables ever made, all specifically for Aaron Spelling. <laughs> I am shocked that this is not just the ROMs are dumped, but that it's actually simulated in v uh, Visual Pinball. So you get the, the spelling soundtrack, you get 90210, or you get CNC Music Factory. TJ Hooker! Yeah! Oh, I got fired. That's right, sometimes you gotta hold the pistol grip during gameplay and fire the gun a bunch of times. So it features callouts and animations based on the mini Aaron Spelling shows. Uh, somewhere on the table is a picture of Tori Spelling. When you hit it with the ball, she says, I love you, Daddy. That is so funny. Apparently this was a gift uh, to Aaron Spelling from his wife. I love you, Dad. It's another oh, that's the other kid. How much do you think they got paid for this? This is a very expensive gift. Hiring the the top of their game pinball designers from Data East. Oh, we gotta fight! I heard. Did you hear what she was saying she was over and over? Yes. <laughs> Good shooting. What was that like from Melrose Place or some shit? God. <laughs> we got shot. <laughs> We're dead meat. Was that dynasty beautiful? Fantastic. Yeah, this is basically insane. There is no other way to describe this. This was the 90s. Another hit from Aaron. Let's see if I can get a multi-ball mode started. I'm enthralled. You should have told me at the beginning there was going to be I wanted it to be a surprise. Are you surprised? I am. This is a good surprise. Good news, because they also reskinned it to be about Alex RetroPal. God, if only. That would be cool. So this having a, a very limited audience, that being a single-digit number of people, some of the callouts are pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty inappropriate. It's another hit. I like the drain. I don't want a drain. Did Aaron spell even like pinball? Who knows? Kind of 
Yeah. This is about the, uh, the height of, uh, Pinball's excess. It just reused the lethal weapon 3 animation. That's cool. I'll thank the sneaker nets for the 100 pitches time for Retropulse Pinball. I wish. Aaron Spelling, the pinball machine. Something that is simulated and emulated. You know this song? Yeah. It's a, it's a crooner classic. Oh, yeah! That's a classy touch. That's beautiful. I love this. Thank you for showing this off. What a good table. That's also not the last rescan of this table we're going to see, but I'll save that for a little bit. Okay. At the end of 1992, they got a hell of a license. A license that didn't seem like it was a that big of a deal at that point, but it would become a much bigger deal in the years later. Alex, Data East got a hold of Star Wars. Holy shit. This would have been when they were uh, putting them on VHS, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or reissuing they, or some, something like that. It was, yeah, it was before the special editions came out on VHS, but yeah, okay. No, Star Wars Mania was still around. I remember there was still, you know. Star this Wars table was Reese. huge. This was the table that I played the shit out of at Peter Piper Pizza in San Antonio. I love this table. Look at that great art on there. There's some uh, mods that people have made with this with different art that is supposedly better, but fuck that. This is the original. There's also one little difference in this particular uh, mod that I'm sure you'll notice as soon as I start. Listen to this. This is, this is great, Danny. They've data Eastified the Star Wars theme. The force is strong with this one. Cool. Skill shots. For this, instead of a gun, it's like a throttle with a button on the side. I like the spinning Death Star. Yeah, isn't it cool? Yeah. I like sick. I like the hopping R2D2. Oh, he's cute. You see what they did to the ball for this mod? <laughs> It's that little guy. It's it's BBA. Yeah, that's uh, apocryphal, but no wait, not, that's not the word I want. It's, I, it's I inappropriate for the time, but oh uh, my God. he's there. Anachronistic, yeah. Anachronistic, that's the word I was looking for. Let's see if I can get some modes going, because this table is pretty deranged. <laughs> Stay on target. Standing by. You like those laser sound effects? Like, there's some actual Star Wars blaster noises in there, but also there's just, like, generic sci-fi sound effects. And, like, there's gunshots in here, too. It's really cool. Let's light up those eyes. What are you doing? Very bad Tony Daniels impersonator there, but... Let's shoot R2. I've been dying to. Kill him, kill him. Got him. Nice. Oh, let's shoot the stormtroopers. See, yeah, during gameplay, you gotta reach down and get the, uh, the throttle and just hit that button to kill all the stormtroopers. Keeps you on your toes. You had a Sarlacc stick long, so there it goes. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. You see dudes just fall in. You get more points. There they go. Did you hear that gunshot? I am your father. Blam, blam, blam. this era when Star Wars was like just another license, you know? It wasn't yeah. like the fucking Bible or whatever. <laughs> like you have to treat it with utmost respect. Here they got like a an FM synth dance remix. I love this, yeah. They got it's R2 so bouncing fun. around. They got all these weird uh, approximated voices. People diving into the Sarlacc pit like it's a mosh pit. They're just diving on in, you're right! Red 2 standing by. 
I really miss this era when you can play flat and fast and loose with licenses like this. It's a... Uh, in some ways, it's kind of the pinball equivalent of that fucked up Namco Star Wars game for Famicom. Oh, yeah! Where Vader turns into a scorpion. This was just Data, he's doing whatever. Ooh, we got it. I got him! I'm gonna destroy it right now. Okay, here we go. What'd you think of that shot? That was really good. That was backhanded. Oh yeah, get fucked, Alderaan! Piece of shit planet! Oh, Fuck you! Two billion voices just shouted out in pure pinball pleasure. Yep. Now you're getting it. That's how Data East gets you. They overwhelm you on every single front. What am I shooting here? I guess the Death Star. Maybe not. Stay on target. They couldn't even get the guy who said stay on target. They had to recreate that voice. How much did he want? Honestly, they probably didn't even want to bother contacting him. They're like, come on, just get Larry moving out. <laughs> Data East Larry. Come on, there we go. We got him. Shoot the death star. I can't get No, that was sick. I don't think I'm gonna get the death star. What are you doing? Time's running out! But she was going ape shit. Oh damn! That was so close! Stormtroopers. You didn't get to hear it, but uh, Yoda was just saying, Give you points, I will. <laughs> There's a pretty good Yoda mode in this. Oh my god, go. Extremely farty rendition of the Cantina theme. It's bad, I love it. <laughs> Was that in the movie? <laughs> Where they went da 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> there was Yoda. Fake Yoda. This table, I love this table. I think if I had an actual pinball arcade, I might consider putting this table in it. It's not the cool Star Wars table that everyone loves today, but it's the janky weird one, as interpreted by Data East USA. The beautiful brain of Data East. They're geniuses. They saved Star Wars. I didn't think it was possible. Gruff Obi Wan. May the force be with you. Rip R2, you got. He's dead as fuck. He's dead, dead. Star Wars. That was the end of 1992. 1993 approaches. Their next license may not be something you would have expected, but it makes some sort of sense. This is the adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. God, there was Rocky. Okay, okay, chat, you may not know this, but at this time period, the Rocky and Bullwinkle license was actually a little bit hot. Do you remember that time? Yeah, it was showing on Nickelodeon. It had some kind of syndication going. It had a, a oh, very hyped up VHS Peabody. release at the time. Oh, look a Peabody! Is that the original Bullwinkle? Or is that fake Bullwinkle? I don't think that was the original. I think they faked him. Hey, this is kind of wrong. 
This is pretty cool. This table's all right. No, the movie was released in, uh, was it 99 or 2000? It's way before that. It's a Data East table, so it still has to have gunshots in it. And yes, Ward Price, Speed Racer also got a second wind uh, in the 90s. So probably because of the MTV errands they were doing. I remember those. Wowie! Wowie! Oh, I forgot about that movie. Yeah, I yeah. think everyone did. I don't think I've ever seen this one in real life. Wrong hat. I think they could have done more with the theme song. They should have added a, a house beat like they did with Star Wars. I agree. The song, the song needs to be funkier. Wrong hat. Wrong hat. Alex, can I convince you to keep this stream going for like another 20 minutes or so? Are you gonna blow my mind? Yeah, because we have a bunch of tables to go, but maybe like six or seven. Okay, okay. Thank you, We're just getting to the good part. Look at that. Bullwinkle's up there. This is like the first time I've played this table. I'm sorry. I didn't do my due, due diligence on Rocky and Bullwinkle. Let's see if we can get something going on the third ball. Yeah, I think we actually have this table in uh, Austin. Do we? I, I thought we had this in Pinballs. Am I wrong? Yeah, I would check it out then. I gotta look. I'm a big Data East fan. You should do a Data East, uh... You should do like, you should do like a Ch Data East challenge of Pinballs and play the Data East table. Oh, good idea. It's the worst game of pinball I've ever played in my life. I'm so sorry, Bullwinkle. Watch out, Pop. Oh. Well, hell. Bonk. We got no time for Rocky and Bullwinkle. We gotta play Jurassic Park. What? Excuse me, that seems like a much more relevant license. A little bit. Maybe just a just a little bit more relevant. But first, the most important part, before we can play the table, we have to test the T-Rex diagnostics. You see him? Oh, he bites your ball! And he chews it up. T-Rex ate my balls! He did! Yeah, I remember that. That's what I remember the most from the Jurassic Park machine was T Rex being able to eat a ball. Mm hmm. Very advanced mechanical things here. So much so that you literally have to test it every time you boot the machine. The T Rex. The T Rex. The most advanced amusement park in the world. Would you say that's true? This is the most advanced theme park in the world? I mean. Most theme parks don't genetically engineer their exhibits, so I'm gonna go with, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Got it. Got his I ass. I guess technically you could say that the living with the land at Epcot does like gene fusion and stuff. It is one of the plants and things like that, so it's not like that exciting. I, I, I do think they're doing very exciting things at Jurassic Park. So you want to invest? I, I would, actually. I, let me just uh, see. Uh, let me just uh, take away money out of Bitcoin. I have been checking that and uh, put it into Jurassic Park. Alright, folks, looks like uh, Jurassic Park. I only have one dollar. We're in stampede mode. Damn it. Now, if you were good at these machines, you could see all kinds of different gameplay modes based on different scenes from these movies featuring the different actors. Or the ball could just go right on down the side. You never see any of it. Just got slurped on down. I got slurped. Got drained. Let's shoot that T-Rex. Extra ball is lit. All right, where's this extra ball? Looks like upper right. There we go, easy. <laughs> Look at him! <laughs> Back at you, buddy! 
They're so whimsical, these machines. They are. Even if the so licenses are supposed to be really self-serious, Data East doesn't care. They have so much energy, Watch these machines. Let's do it again. They should all be destroyed. <laughs> Number ready? I bet if they could, they would have included every single line from the movie in this machine. Mosquito! <laughs> Mosquito mode, I guess. Mosquito's part of the movie? Yes! They're a huge part of the movie! Really? That's where they get the DNA from, the mosquitoes and amber. Oh, right. Yeah. I guess so. Sorry, I saw Jurassic Park a billion times as a kid. It was one of my favorite movies. The T-Rex is loose! Still is my favorite movie. Oh, oh no! I need to the door of the park. And John Hammond gets away scot-free. I want to play one more ball on this. Okay. This is a table everyone knows and loves. There's some really good content in this game featuring, uh... Uh, what's his face? The, the Mr. DNA character. His name is Mr. DNA. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Go, Back in the stampede. Go, 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 You're also being asked to press start with no predator. Ooh, okay. Yeah, that's something I haven't been showing off. A lot of these tables, uh, starting at some time in the 90s, when you push start and there was no credits inserted, the machine would shit talk you. It'd be like, hey, put in a quarter. Dull. All part of the pinball experience. Yeah, it's like in the 90s, pinball was trying to design itself to just absolutely, like, blow out your ass with, like, lights <laughs> and sound. Yeah. And that's the Data East approach, blowing out your ass. Oh, It's a baby! It's a baby! What's the smart bomb used for? Let's find out. I was gonna say probably killing dinosaurs. Alright, I'm pushing the smart bomb. Oh, it's not active. Yeah, later pinball machines of this era had, like, inventories? <laughs> And items you could get. That was more prevalent on uh, the Williams tables, but sometimes you saw it on Data East. Dino DNA! Dino DNA! I think the machine had an advantage at arcades because of the, the dinosaur noises, which are just naturally louder than everything else. I just want to see him eat the ball. Just eat the damn ball, T-Rex. It's a really hard side ramp shot. I don't think I'll be able to make it. It looks good. I've, I've never, I've played this machine a lot as a kid. I was never used to it. <laughs> Dude, I love DMT animations. They're really stupid. There's only so much you can represent. With so few pixels. But they tried their best. Fuck, it's tri-ball! I can't see shit because everything's flashing! Well, he had jackpot. That T-Rex is going ape shit up there. Machine also had a gun. Thank you, Witchy Cat Ollie. 20 month Risa Pinkhouse slash Cash Tail and Mr. Celebrating Star Wars. Well, thank you and welcome. We are, uh, we need my dinosaur, which is pretty cool. Hey, welcome to your weekend. Thank you. I should move on, but man. Man, this table's so cool. It's got dinosaurs, it's got a big T-Rex head. What more do you need? T-Rex eats you at the end, even. Hey! You matched! First match of the evening. We got it. And now the love theme of Jurassic Park. 
Did you see the push start thing? Yes. Instead of a finger, it was a freaking Aww. velociraptor claw. So cute. It only gets better from here, because the next table, I am pleased to tell you, is Last Action Hero. Oh my god. This is, for my money, the loudest, most obnoxious table Data East has ever produced. Okay, I see the construction equipment. I like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Who's seen this movie? I've seen this movie. It's okay. It's a, it's a parody. I think a lot of people didn't get it. Especially at the time. People hated it. I think Last Action Hero is fine. I think it's a fine film. It's a little film. It's, it's metatextual, which is good. <laughs> That's how the game begins. <laughs> That's pretty good. And of course, this one also has a gun. So the first thing you do is fire. Yeah, but this movie was like, it was promoted to hell and back. They were really pushing mm -hmm. it. They, they, it was all over the place. It was a massive bomb. Terrible shot. Just completely bricked that. Let's try again. I'm trying to get the police chief on my ass. Every time you hit the bumpers, it's an explosion or a gunshot. Every time. I love the Sonic Nightmare that is the Data East soundscape. That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> Sonic Nightmare. <laughs> Hearing this? You can't even tell what he's saying. It's the guy yelling. This ball's gonna be good. Not like the last two. Let's play chicken. M ball is lit. Baby. Danny has the Alrighty. magic ticket. So yeah, the movie was about a kid who could go into the movie world with his magic ticket, and uh, from the movie world comes Arnold Schwarzenegger, who is a uh, well, action hero, and yeah. We got you might it. say it's one of the original multiverse films. It's in ball time. Don't say multi ball. Last Action Hero was Gex, but for movies. Oh. Wow, I, I like how right you are, actually. The freaking pinball pushed the other one over the edge. There we go. Nice. Let's do that again. I'm gonna think of it, Sonic Nightmare. <laughs> That's just like the ultimate way to put these machines. Yeah, it's just it's because it's all these sounds constantly playing. Yeah, constantly. all interrupting and overlapping each other. It's like a retro foul stream. Good lord. game <laughs> sorry honey or not to be and hamlet is taking out the trash uh. <laughs> not to be <laughs> i'll be back is there a perfect pinball table if there is it's this one i'm gonna play one more ball I just like hearing the chief yell, because it's just like cartoonish yelling. Rip. You got smart missiles. I did. What's our feature? This one again. Come quite a ways from Laser War, haven't we? A little bit. Anyone, uh, anyone up for some ballyhoo? No one ever wanted to play ballyhoo after this. That is a shame. I think people should have played ballyhoo. I think, I think they should have remade ballyhoo with a bunch of explosions and screaming. 
Yeah, why not? Make every table with explosions and screaming. I agree. Put I a agree. pistol grip on there. I think that um, the Rocky and Moinkle game would have been better with a lot more screaming. It did have gunshots at least. Man, I cannot hit that ramp to save my life. If only I was good at pinball. Sorry, honey. We got one more shot. There's a freaking magnet! That's what was fucking me up. Can you destroy the magnet? I wish. God, it did it again! Then it from Sneaker Nets. This is American culture in one convenient loud package. Exactly. This is pure Americana. Source me. <laughs> Finally hit that ramp. Let's play a chicken. Last. Last. The last, last hero. He wasn't the last action hero at all. There was a bunch of them after this. What the fuck? Did you see that? That dude's head exploded. I can't take any more of this. This is too much for me. Go. Holy shit. I got exploding heads on the freaking DMD. This next table. Oh, this is a hell of a license. This is a pro pickup for Data East. I don't know if they did big business with this one. I don't know if this was what uh, anyone wanted to see at the time. But it's definitely what I wanted to see. This is Tales from the Crypt. No. What? Yeah, you know. Got it. <laughs> You heard the man. Look at him. Did you hang out with the Crypt Keeper? He seems alright. I bet he's got some really good booze. Oh my god, you're absolutely right. Just like aged thousands of years. You know what he has even more of? Boots. Let's go shopping. I see. No, that's 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 okay. No, no. Is the crypt keeper a jester? Yes. The crypt oh, keeper what is... have you done? What have you done by Listen, saying that? I'm not that? doing the voice. Don't worry. Who the said that? The crypt keeper is a form of jester. Absolutely. Alex, tell me who said that. <laughs> I'm not. Outing our beautiful chat I'm gonna number. look at the <laughs> I'm gonna look at the archive to figure out who said that. That's right. Because you just you just ruined my life. It's true. He's an undead jester who makes these terrible puns about death and murder. He's a murder jester. The more the merrier. See? <laughs> what what about this? What if I just call him a goth jester? Are jesters goth? Shh tough call. They share, they share much in common with the goths. What if I wore a, a like a black and and gold jester hat everywhere? Would I be would I be accepted by society? I don't think so. I think you would be rejected further. Grave at the office. I grave at the office. He said. This table is basically nonstop crypt keeper puns. And uh, macabre animations. I love it. I really do. Unfortunately, the only table I've played of this in real life, I launched the ball uh, once, went down the drain, and then that happened two more times, and that's all I got to play of that Tales from the Crypt. In many ways, these, simu these simulations, uh, in many ways, these simulations offer the best experience possible with these pinball machines. In real life, they're often broken down. Or, uh, states of disrepair. And that's why it's good that these uh, recreations exist. You might say it's preservation. It is! It is! It's I know a you're big, big. Crypt Kicker! See, I can't. He keeps doing these beautiful puns. I can't interrupt him. Okay, uh. Hello, boys and ghouls! 
You gotta give the people what they want. I do! I do! You've lit the creature feature. Come on into the crypt! <laughs> that was a cool animation. Very good. Someone got skeletonized. It was me. I'm a skeleton now. Fuck. Angor! Jesus Christ! Extra ball. for historians for a thousand years to play this and like and talk about like the human's fascination with death because mm -hmm. it's fun it is it's all in good fun Come on into the crypt. death and horror were fun when tales from the crypt was airing you got another ball not like nowadays uh all the horror is all like I don't know. I, I don't know where I was going with that. Hey, they said multi-ball. Oh, they got the rights back. Good for them. I'm happy for them. Arg! Ah! <laughs> I guess this is a Data East table, only instead of gunshots, it's uh, the Crypt Keeper laughing, which I think is a good trade-off. There's some screaming. Gotta hit this ramp. animations, they're so extreme. Oh, you're right, I hear the gunshots. There we go. Don't worry, there's gunshots. Oh my god! Ew, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> That's some HBO shit. <laughs> didn't count. I thought I hit the little thing. Have I convinced everyone that Data East is uh, one of the best pinball makers of all time? Mm -hmm. Alex says so. I, I think they are. I'm in love with them. This is fantastic. Thank you for going extra so we could show this off. Oh yeah, thank you for doing the endurance round here. Oh hell yeah. Anything for my man, the Crypt Keeper. I just noticed the beige with the the, the chainsaws in the uh, in the glass in the back glass are unhappy. Mm -hmm. A lot of cool details Ooh, here. Back. Man, I should watch Tales from the Crypt. That's that show scared me as a kid. It was really scary. I was just a small, small, easily scared baby. I shouldn't have been watching HBO. Sorry. One more shot here, and then we'll move on to the next table. There we go. Thank you, thank you. It's good to be recognized. Just drinking from a dude's skull. What you do? You think parents would have gotten mad at this if they knew it existed? I think so, but I think they were too busy being mad at Mortal Kombat at the time. Oh yeah, Mortal Kombat was taking the heat off the Crypt Keeper. He's laughing it up. Okay, anyway, I'm having too much fun here. Yeah, you're having a good time. So the Crypt Keeper was enough of a celebrity to sell this pinball machine. How about uh, we look at another celebrity? They reskinned Lethal Weapon 3 again, Alex. Okay. This time, you'll never believe who they got. Uh, Trix Rabbit. Close. What? It's Michael Jordan. <laughs> you know, reskin Lethal Weapon 3 to be about uh, Michael Jordan. They released this in, in arcades? No, this is another limited release. I'm pretty sure it was just given to Jordan himself. 
But this game has a great opening, check this out. Oh my god, yes! And now, the starting lineup for your world champion, Chicago! Amazing! So much this work. Is so good. So much work for like just one machine they're ever going to make. God, Data East. Barkley versus Godzilla. What? Check Godzilla's ass. Fuck him. Fuck that dinosaur. He's not a dinosaur. He's Godzilla. What can you even say? This is Data East that they're most out of control. I think they knew there would only be one machine of this, so they were just like, you know. Barkley versus Godzilla. They can't sue us if they don't know about it. Oh, I gotta shoot! <laughs> hey! Mm -hmm. I'm so glad they put this in here. I hope these guys were paid full time for making this table. This is really good. Like, for a game that no one would play. Mm -hmm. Just Michael Jordan and maybe like once. And then he puts it in his garage or something. <laughs> There's some really good animations in this too, like if you brick a shot it shows like a ball bouncing off of Michael Jordan's face. And he doesn't react or anything, it's really funny. Yeah, it is wild that both of the uh, custom Lethal Weapon 3 reasons only got made with the actual ring to be dumped and preserved. Yeah, that's the amazing part. So few machines that they let someone uh, dump them. It's really unlikely, but I'm glad it happened. shots. We have just a couple more tables after this, but man, Data East went, really went out in a blaze of glory. Jordan, rebound! Jordan, with the re- Jordan! <laughs> Good animation. No, oh, they didn't bother putting in a uh, a match animation. Fair enough. Because Michael Jordan's never gonna run out of quarters. What does he need replays for? What a thing they've done. That was really good. <clears throat> That's the end of 1993, and we've reached the very last year of Data East's operations. This is 1994. I think this is my personal favorite. This is my favorite uh, Data East era pinball machine. Can you guess what it is? Um... What the fuck? I guess it was time for Tommy Mania. Mm-hmm. It sure was. The Who's Tommy. Not, uh... Well, let me, let me, let me diagram this. This is Data East's interpretation of the Broadway adaptation of the movie version of an album by The Who. Okay. Do you, do you got all that? So it's for... Based on the Broadway musical version... Of the movie uh, the, of, of the, the movie rock that opera. Was based off the concept album. <laughs> right. It's a lot to keep track of, but they went so, so hard for this game. Do you see the Union Jack there? Yeah. All the little uh, names on there? Those are different modes. This game has like something like fucking 13 different gameplay modes. I mean, it makes sense for there to be a pinball game based off of Tommy. Like. Oh, this is quite loud. Let me turn this down. Let me uh, trap the ball first. And I like this, uh, this, this real good version of a uh, remake. Yeah, just, just a, just a second. You'll get to hear it. Because they didn't get the, uh, the original album. 
They didn't get the uh, the Broadway tracks even. They just had some dudes at Data East to cover the pool. There we go. Perfect. I'm not. I'm really not. Can I just reset? What's the reset button on this thing? Is it F3? Yeah, there we go. Let's pretend like that didn't happen. This is uh, Tommy. It's based on the Broadway musical, based on the movie, based on the rock opera. Are you ready, Alex? I am We're ready. We're not gonna take it. We're not gonna take it. <laughs> I gotta put coins in. Tommy, can you hear me? Look at this dramatic opening. They try to replicate so much from the album. Really, really way more than they should have. It's like the overture where you see where his dad died in the DMD. You know, I've never seen Tommy. I've never seen the movie. Ah, uh, that's gotta be the Who. <laughs> Sounds just like him. <laughs> and then it does the, the FM synth part. That's so good. Let's see if I can backhand up the old uh, Union Jack here. Nope. Badness. Let's make something happen. There we go. Tommy has a really hard life in the album, and the way that they trivialize it through these pinball modes, it's kind of fucked up. But that's Data East. They go big, they go hard, they do not care about the, uh, the subtleties of the, the story about Tommy. done vocals for so many of the songs too suck ass this is what i play pinball like after 2 hours <laughs> all right we jack ready. we relit the tommy's beloved union jack So much here. This is the densest pinball table I've ever played in my life. You can play this every day for a thousand years and still find new things. All right, maybe that's not true. What do we got? We're not gonna take it. We're not gonna take it. Multi millions. Look at the things on this machine. The giant Union Jack. The, the propellers on the airplane. Multiple ramps, vocal songs. It's got it all. It's got it all. Pinball peaked. Where was there to go after this point? I guess that's what Data East thought too, because they got acquired by Sega. Like, fuck man, we peaked. I'm not gonna take that. I'm not gonna take it? We're not gonna take it. Do one more mode and then we'll move on. This is such a good table. And I like it not just because it plays good and has a great layout and great rules, but I gotta admit the vocal songs are a big part of the appeal. Because <laughs> you have never heard the Who like this. Hunter Bitch from Sneakernets. Jurikin Pinball needs to happen, listen. We all wish for that. Agreed. Gotta get that Union Jack. It's such an important part of the album. There we go. Smash that mirror. Now I'm just watching the play. Sorry, yeah. I, I don't know what to say. Can you even make out a single individual sound effect or musical cue, or is it just a big 
mishmash of it's sounds. It's a big sloppy mess and I kind of love it. Oh god, we restarted it. We broke the mirror again. Oh. Yeah, the, the sound effects are kind of uh, crushed. So the, the Tommy call out sounds a little bit like a woo. Yeah, Sonic Mess, exactly. Alright, let's get this mode. Let's get that started. Shoot the Union Jack, Tommy. Or just drain. That's fine. One more ball. Let's see if I can redeem this. I'm not going to hit the skill shot. We're just lying to ourselves at this point. <laughs> okay. We're, we're done. We're done with Tommy. That's that's a clear sign. Yeah, this could use some CMC Music Factory, I agree. Oh, definitely. The, uh, the match animation for this is pretty good. And then, as you step away from the machine, it serenades you. Look at this. It went so... I will say this, Baby East goes hard in every game they made. Data East All Star Choir! Smebble Bear's making a pinball offer called Danny about a pinball wizard who went to San Antonio and got loved by an animal. <laughs> Based on a true story. Then it slowly fades away. This is pure pinball artistry by people who are going harder than they ever should have. We have just three more tables to go. Alex, I think you'll like this next theme. It's 1994. Okay, that, that, that also works. Really? 1994 era. Uh, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I did something wrong. 1994 era WWF. Let's fucking go. Look at him. This one. Alex, as you recognize these wrestlers in the DMD, uh, let me know who they are. Okay, we pay attention. I see Yokozuna in the back glass. I'm not saying anything. Don't worry, everybody. Okay, good. Nothing but respect for Yokozuna. I guess that was the bolster. The song is uh, Real American, probably. Yeah, it is. That's Bret Hart. I know that. Attacks on Jim Duggan, but it says his name there, because I, I don't know what it was. And you're trying to light up Macho Man. Cool. Let's get him lit. Q and R, you fucks, for the raid, we are playing pinball games. You are now by Baby East, and we are playing WWF Royal Rumble. Hey, welcome, Inari. We played a bunch of pinball tonight. What were you up to? There's Yokozuna's theme. Body slam. I see, uh... <laughs> Who are they? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the crazy cowboys. Which cowboys are these guys? Chad, who are they? There's a miniature playfield up here. The you see that? Guns. Okay, okay, I get it. I, I look, at this, look at this little pinball machine I'm playing. Oh my god, it's a baby! So they managed to include wrestlers oh, even you didn't know about. That's amazing. God damn it. Yeah! 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 Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> Thank you, Hulkster. Man, 
man, somehow we haven't seen a single video mode tonight. That was another big thing in uh, DMD-enabled pinball machines of this era. You would get actual mini games that you would play on the DMD. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. He's lit. Let's see if we can get that Macho Man out of here. Where is he? Hurry up and get back into the ring. I'm trying. I think I did it. So how would you rank the licenses we've seen tonight? Um, what are the biggest and best that we've seen? Who's Tom really, really, really It was very creative, despite being based on the Broadway musical. Still really good that they did that. Apparently enough, I thought Cave Playboy was kind of wild. A little bit. And yeah, Star Wars was amazing, yeah. Oh, Star Wars is so good. They had the licenses, and they pulled them all off completely perfectly. Watch your back. Yeah, Jurassic Park was also great. That, that was the one I still like a lot of kids. Yeah. Day to East, they made the crowd pleasers. If you played a pinball machine of a certain era, you probably played a Data East one. Oh yeah, and Lethal Weapon 3, which got used to make many other games. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, it was a great base to work from. Fuck. Yeah! 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 Oh yeah! Oh yeah! This is absolutely crazy! One, two, three! Hey! Another match! Good for me. Good for you. Two more tables to go. This next one was the very last one made by Data East produced. Uh, the next, the, the table after this one was designed and uh, intended to be released by Data East, but it was the first Sega table. So this table we're about to play, the last, and some would say the best Data East table. I don't know if I agree with them, but this table's pretty good. Of all the bands to put, just just like he said, of all the bands in the world, this is definitely one of them. This is Guns N' Roses, the pinball table. I guess so. Going out in a blaze of glory. Let's uh, let's add a band member. Dizzy. Dizzy. We got him. This table is very popular among uh, pinball enthusiasts. In terms of a license, kind of uh, weird timing for this, because this came out right after the, the widely reviled spaghetti incident, which was when they were definitely on the decline. And arguably they hadn't really had a hit since uh, Appetite for Destruction. However it turned out, they put they put their full ass into this machine. I think this is actually uh it's actually the guy. Axel. I think it is. Max. Max. Looking at their discography before the stream, I wanted to get my facts straight. They had it was really weird the trajectory they took. Cause all their hits were on that first album. And then, like, November Rain was after that, and then, like, nothing else. Feel free to correct me, fans. Yeah, uh, everyone get mad at all the Guns N' fans get that stand. Now. I got Axel. Oh, I hope I get Duff. He's my favorite. It's like the original master vocal track with FM synth uh, guitar backing, yeah. I'm pretty sure is what it is. Pretty high quality though. Duff! There he is! Multiple people mentioning that, the, that there was some member of Guns N' Roses with a pinball fan. Oh, 
that would do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, I appreciate that. I like when pinball machines play sad noises when they bring out the, the outlines. Coma is lit. Coma is lit? C coma? Yeah. Do we want to? It was Slash. Okay, Slash help is cute. It's fine. G G who's Gilby? Video mode! We finally have a video mode! This video mode was later reused in Stern's uh, Harley Davidson table. They don't often reuse content like that, so it's kind of weird that it showed up there. Still be rolls! Be rolled, alright. Axel combo. Is that a Taco Bell? Oh. Match. <laughs> Whoa, hey! Oh, oh, dude. Bummer, dude. There's a lot more to see here. This has, I think, more modes than Tommy does, so if you like Guns N' Roses more than The Who, this may be your preferred table. It's definitely big and loud and has everything Data East was known for, for better and for worse. But let's get to the last table, the table that killed Data East and caused them to sell off their assets to Sega, where uh, a lot of the same designers, they remained employed. They didn't lose their jobs. They just kept on making tables. Eventually, we may cover uh, Sega's reign. That was part of the uh, the poll this week, but uh, that'll be in the future. For now, the first, the last Data East table and the first Sega table was based on that enduring license we all know and love. Bigger than the WWF, bigger than Guns N' Roses, bigger than Jurassic Park, The Simpsons, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles put together. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Of course, everyone knows and loves the hit movie, Maverick. Maverick? Do y'all remember Maverick? Yeah, you know Maverick. The great movie about the riverboat gambler, I think. I guess. Maybe. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that face in between the flippers. <laughs> <laughs> this is where it all ended up. Out of all the games we've seen tonight. Get right up and bring your money. This is where it ended. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Maverick. And welcome to the first ever annual All Rivers Raw Poker Jam. Joker! Did you see that little jester that just jested on by? No, I didn't. Oh, the back. Oh, the, was it DMR? The DMR has finally delighted me. I don't remember the name. The DMD. Oh, delightful. The D stands for delight of air. It stands for the jester. Good one, Alex. <laughs> So I don't have much to say about this table. I have played this in real life. Pinballs in, uh, here in Austin did have this table for a short time. And then uh, the next time I went there, it was gone. So even today, people don't have time for Maverick. Man, maybe. Maybe someone finally saw the Maverick table of their dreams. Real Maverick that was like, yes, yes, I need this. Uh, the one-of-a-kind, inoperable, bare-naked ladies table is still there, however. It was featured in one of their music videos. Mm -hmm. All right, so while I play some Maverick, Alex, why don't you sum up what we've seen tonight? Well, uh, we started off with some, I wouldn't say normal, but some, uh, you know what I'm gonna say? Bombastic. I, yeah. I think I think the Data East has, has stayed very bombastic from beginning to end. They're, they're, all their pinball tables feel like they're grabbing you by the shoulders and shaking you and saying, ah, play games. Yeah. Yeah. Even at the beginning, it seems really <laughs> aggressive, you know? The other day I had like a 10 minute, uh, it was more like a 15 minute game of uh, Guns N' Roses. And after having that machine yell at me and have explosions and gunshots go the whole time, it felt like, it, I felt like I needed a nap. <laughs> it was just overwhelming in every sense. Yeah, I kind of feel exhausted. Yeah, we haven't really done much of anything other than play pinball, but I still feel like I've been through something. Uh, hit me on 16. Stand. 
You win. You win. I raise. Andy up. We've got cows. I'm just glad I got to show off all the tables. It's nice to have a counterpoint to the uh, the Williams and Bally dynasty. Usually when people talk about pinball tables from the 90s, it's just nothing but Williams. It's all like Adam's Family this, Twilight Zone that, Funhouse and Whirlwind and all them. They never talk about Data East. And maybe in some ways these tables have aged poorly. Yeah, maybe people don't want pinball tables that constantly yell at them and play gunshots and explosions, but... In the Damn it, I'm not I'm not most people, that's what I want. Let's hit that riverboat. God damn it. Last ball here. I just want to say Data East rules. The uh, the Japanese developer and also their apparently unsupervised American pinball branch. <laughs> they did a lot in what uh, short time they had. And they also produced one video game at this time. Do you remember which one it was, Alex? The team at Data East Pinball made a prototype arcade game that was never released. They put so much effort into it, so much money and talent went into the making of Tattoo Assassins. That was them, yes! And it never came out. A real damn shame. Dealer's choice. Dealer wins. Dealer wins. But here's what's good about these tables. People preserve them. People love them. Uh, in trying to put together this stream, I uh, downloaded a whole shit ton of visual pinball tables. This was one of the ones where there wasn't a visual pinball X upgrade. There wasn't even a playable visual pinball regular version. I had given up hope. I thought I just wouldn't be able to show this on stream. But just a few months ago, someone released this beautiful table you see here, which is actually compatible with VR headsets. Oh my god. This is a VR room adaptation of Maverick based on the movie that no one remembers. That's someone, what kind of love is here in, in the in the pinball community. Someone really loves Maverick. Someone loves Maverick. There's someone out there for every pinball table, uh, except for Playboy, I guess, which still hasn't been upgraded. <laughs> Maybe someday. That's, uh, that's the message I want to get across for this stream. Someone update uh, Playboy 35th anniversary for modern tastes, please. Thank you. Thank you, Celtape, for the 100 bits from Soho down to Austin. Danny must have played them all. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I did play them all, and now we're fucking done. God, I, I need to take a shower after that one. Jesus Christ, Data yeah. East. You put me through so much. I've heard so many gunshots whiz past my head. I've been through so many explosions. I've seen licenses played with and just kind of not really given any regard for how important they are. Like Star Wars? Fuck it. Give it an FM synth uh, dance theme. Make it so you can shoot R2-D2. That's Why what the people shoot want. shoot him? What's he doing? But, uh, but that's the end of tonight's show. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks to all of our patrons who voted to make Data East happen. I'm yeah, really glad you. you picked Data East. That was a, a good cross-section of what pinball was like in the 80s and 90s. Also, super glad I finally got to do my first pinball stream. Hopefully, uh, everybody enjoyed it. I may do some extra pinball on my, uh, my Sarduce channel. Mm. I haven't decided yet. If I do, it'll be uh, Pinball FX3. Hell so, yeah. Uh, yeah, might end up doing that. I'm going to look for a raid target. Alex, uh, wrap us up. If you'd like to support us directly, we do have a Patreon, patreon.com slash RetroPals. You can pitch in five bucks a mo month and vote on when we play every Wednesday. You voted for Data East Pinball and we Thank delivered. You. Thank and you for thank voting. You for that. We are also on YouTube, youtube.com slash RetroPals. We post full length highlight highlights of our streams there, including our latest one, which is a look at the PCFX. So if you want to see a ton of PCFX games, please, please do check that out. Last but not least, we do have a Discord where you can chat about games, you can chat about music, you can also chat about your cats, many other beautiful things you can chat about. So do check it out. Please chat about your cats. Please. I want to hear cats. about them. I love your cats. All right. I've made my decision. We are rating Eltrioc, who is playing Metal Slug games. Metal Slug's always a good time. I love Metal Slug. It would be next to the, the pinball machines in many arcades back in the day. You'd see uh, a Metal Slug or two. It's just like being back in the 90s. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you later. See ya, folks.